Hello. Happy Saturday. I accidentally exited out of the uh, live chat. <laughs> Hi, Patty. Hey, Chris. Hey, Nancy. Welcome, welcome. Is everything look and um, here, uh, here, sound okay? <laughs> I started early too. I got everything ready, so why not, right? Hey, Nicole, how's it going? Welcome, welcome. Just gonna let a few people get here before we start sewing. So uh, Thursday, we cut out the Suki robe by Helen's Closet. It was really fun. I took my time doing it. And then today we're sewing it all the way through, but I won't take my time. I promise I'll try and keep it at a good pace um, since I know a lot of people won't watch it live and they'll watch, watch it uploaded. And maybe someday there will be timestamps. So always check the description for timestamps. And if you wanna help the stream um, and you can't financially, you can always help me with timestamps. Um, and all that requires is giving me the time at each step and you can just email it to me at so so live at gmail.com. And then I can put them in the description and they're so helpful for people because that way they can just jump around and not have to listen to my silly stories and stuff. Hey Morgan, welcome, welcome. Great, thanks for telling me that. I know, me too, Nicole. It was so great. I got, I'm on their newsletter list and they sent, they put it in their newsletter. That was pretty cool. I was pretty happy about that. So um, yesterday, so one of the great struggles of my life is video, like <laughs> editing video, exporting video, and uploading video are all really time consuming. And I have incredible internet here. It's in amazing. So uploading video is actually the fastest thing I do, which is crazy because it wasn't always like that. I'm just lucky, honestly. It's, it's, um, it's just, it's kind of a weird story of how he got this really great internet, but it's, I'm just really lucky and it's why I have a separate office so I can have this internet. <laughs> it makes live streaming a lot better too. So um, I realized like it was gonna take like a few hours to export it because you can't just edit the video and upload it to YouTube. You have to like export it to the format it's gonna live on the internet in. And um, I had cut out an extra Suki for myself hoping that I could kind of get it to the stage of the neckband and then that way I can show you both methods on how to attach the neckband because um, I know people are wanting to do either. And I did, I was like, you know what, this is it. I've been working since Monday. I can take this time to do this. Otherwise I would have been recording more video and I would have been in that endless loop of creating video. I had to edit and upload and export. So anyway, so I did. And, oh, it's on my dress form. Right here, it turned out so great. I lined it. Hey, Elizabeth, how's it going? Hey, Miss Smarty, Smarty Pants. Oh, I almost just like, flipped the P and the S and said party, party smant. <laughs> I saw you just subscribe. Thanks for subscribing. Hey, Melinda. Hey, Melin. How's it going? <laughs> yes, it started. Well, the um, email came out yesterday. So I think that that's why it already happened. But you can always watch it um, on YouTube and you can jump around to kind of get to the bits that you're interested in. If you're watching on a device, this is kind of a tip I tell people because a lot of folks uh, don't know this, but if you're watching on a device rather than a desktop, you can often tap the right side of the video, like like, uh, like over here. Like if you tap right about here on the screen or right here, it'll jump ahead 20 seconds or jump back 20 seconds. And you can actually set that amount in your settings I never even fiddled with my YouTube settings until I started streaming. I like Twitch, so. Um, so anyway, you can just jump around. And yes, yes, here's my jacket. So, all right, so I've had this poppy linen. I get so many comments on it. It's gorgeous. I totally agree. It's really expensive. I bought the bare minimum for what I wanted. I bought it in two different colors. So um, funnily, I made the pants number one. I say funny because those are extremely simple pair of little pull-on elastic pants. And I made a pair of pull-on pants out of this fabric and I couldn't be happier. They're just like, you didn't need much fabric. And I got the most bang for my buck because I got to use every piece of it. And that fabric just, it speaks for itself. You don't need a fancy pattern. And um, that pattern is such a great, great staple. Um, and so 
when I was looking to see if I had anything suitable for this, and I knew I wanted a shorter version, so yeah, it is shorter. I kind of looked through and I was like, you know, I have this extra boiled wool from making another little short jacket and it worked perfect for what I wanted. And so I charged ahead and cut it out. And then I was like, um, fine, I have plenty. I had like double of this poppy fabric and I did not have enough. So my sleeves are on the wrong grain line, which it doesn't look like it because it just kind of blends in with the jacket. So, um, it's fine. It's a really loose fitting sleeve or, you know, it's not a big deal. And I had used contrast uh, for the sleeve bands here and I will use it for the neck band. And I'm not going to do a waist tie because I know that's not how I'm going to wear it, but I'm thinking about doing buttons and I just kind of went through my stash. I have these buttons. I just want to wear it at home, kind of Mr. Rogers style. Uh, just kind of over my clothes, you know, in the evening to keep, keep, keep cozy. And I was thinking I could put two buttons here. I have, these, I have two of these. It worked. They like work great. But then I have this really interesting vintage thing that came off of something. I literally don't know what it was. And that's why I wrote, I have this thing that came off this thing. Um, and it has these like finished braided loops. It's very chunky, but I mean, I just wonder, you know, it's so, it kind of lends itself to it, doesn't it? But it is a little chunky, so I'm, I don't know. Maybe I won't. So anyway, that's my plan. And so on this one, I'm going to do a clean finished neckband method. So my jacket will be a little harder to do, and I think that'll be great for the demonstration uh, because it's a little thicker. And the way I sewed this was I just um, sewed my front and or my outer jacket and my inner jacket separately. So shoulder side seams. I attached my pockets to the outer only and I just did patch pockets because it's really easy to drop stuff in there and I tend to schlep a lot of stuff around my house. And then um, I made my sleeves two inches shorter because of fabric chicken, which just means I didn't have enough fabric. And then I clean finished my sleeve bands. We'll do that today. I hemmed the um, outer fabric over the bottom. So technically it would be reversible except for that right there. But I, I don't mind. I probably will wear this the other way around because if I'm not really cold, this can be a little scratchy. I find like wools and I wear a ton of hand knits and, um, and in varying degrees of yarn as far as scratchiness. And I don't mind that if I'm cold, I don't notice it. It doesn't, it's not scratchy. There's something about it for me that's temperature based. And I love wearing wools. So, um, so I can wear it inside out if I'm feeling not so cold and I will clean finish this. The only mistake I made was for some reason, I thought these center fronts had a one inch hem allowance and I trimmed this back. So I'm gonna have to get creative there. <laughs> I, I could, you know, like I, I, this is what I wanted to do. I was like, yeah, perfect. It matches my hem. Um, yeah. Well, you'll get to, you love it when I make mistakes. So <laughs> I did that for you, right? So yeah, it has the hanging loop in here. And um, yeah, so we'll clean finish this neckband. And um, today we're gonna do the exposed seam method on the one that Helen's Closet sent to us. So let me catch up with chat a little bit. Hey, Barbara, how's it going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're already way back. That's okay, Miss Smarty Pants. Really, 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 really. Don't worry about that. You can, you can pause the live stream, but um, the only thing about doing that is if you want to comment, you might be way behind in the chat. Um, so it's up to you. And I actually don't know what happens when I go offline, if you're behind, if it makes you jump to the end and you lose your place. But here's another really interesting thing about YouTube that I haven't played around with a whole lot. And it might be something like a little, um, a little widget that you need to download to your Google Chrome. Is that where I got it? But it's a little bookmark widget. And so like when I'm watching like Sew to Fit, who's another sewing live streamer, um, and I want to, you know, like remember that little thing she said, you can actually place a bookmark in a stream that's only visible to you. Pretty cool. Um, that's on any stream. As long as you have the widget, I think it works. It doesn't matter if they don't have the widget. So anyway. Yeah, that, I know. I'm loving this thing. It's really cool. I'm really glad that it worked out timing wise. <clears throat> and I'm not kidding. As soon as I was done sewing it, 
the um, my video was done exporting and I could carry on. So it was a really good little like intermission for me, you know? So, and it was pretty quick to sew, even though I had to basically sew two jackets. Um, it was, you know, kind of simple because I didn't do the, the waistband. I haven't done the neckband yet. And I didn't have to do any seam finishing because I just sewed the seams together and then placed one jacket inside the next. So, yeah. Ah, thanks, Nicole. Yeah, the agave jumpsuit. That's what we should call it, right? <laughs> yes. Hello, Rebecca. I am going to do French seams today, including the side seam pockets. Um, so I'm going to follow the instructions pretty closely, mainly because I feel like this will serve as a how-to for a lot of folks, and it's a sponsored stream. I even wrote down the steps so I can kind of stay in the same order. If you've ever been here before, a lot of times I do try and stay close to it but I will kind of do my own order of operations or methods occasionally. Um, so normally I would always sew my side seam, sew my underarm on my sleeve, and then put the sleeve to the garment, but I'm not gonna do that. And this is probably gonna be the very first time in over 500 videos that I will, I will be sewing a sleeve like that. <laughs> so, and it makes it really easy. And because it's not a set in sleeve, I think it's a perfect application for that. And it's also gonna make French seaming the sleeve to the um, garment a lot easier. And I have a video on French seaming set in sleeves if you ever need help with that. So you, oh, there's a live button near the pause button. Are you serious? I have looked for something like that. Wait. So that little arrow with the line, that jumps you to live. I'm always scared to touch that because on my audiobook, bad things happen if I touch that. So yeah, okay, let's get to it. So if you're new to live streams, I'm just gonna give you a really brief overview um, because I know that there could be folks that are used to uploaded video. You are all welcome here. Everybody is welcome here, no matter your ability or who you are. And uh, we love it when you chat, but don't feel like you have to. Lurking is totally fine. If you want to chat, you need to be logged into YouTube. And uh, you may have to create something called a channel, which is their name for an account. It doesn't mean you have to start streaming or uploading video. But it does mean like when you want to save a video for later, you can save it. And you can make those visible or not visible, just so you know. Um, what else? Oh. Okay, I haven't even done this myself yet. At the top of the chat window, and if you um, can't see the chat window, it's usually under the, um, how do I disappear this so I can see where it's at? Hide chat. So under, under for me on my desktop, it's directly under right here. Ooh, this is really awkward. Right here it says show chat or hide chat. On my device it was a little different. It was actually a little line of icons and one of them said show chat. So um, if you wanna see the chat, so you can see what people are talking about. But right above that, once you show the chat, there is another little toggle and it's right under here uh, for me. And it says top chat or live chat. And we all recommend you switch it to live chat because what happens is certain chat messages don't show if you don't have live chat. So um, I'm hoping that I didn't miss anybody so far because I didn't have mine turned on. So, um, hey, Mrs. Necro. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, yeah, I totally know what you mean. I do that a lot. Yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, and that, you know, yeah, especially a lot of people might be sewing something completely different. They may not be chatting in stream. Uh, what else can I tell you about live streams? Um, I don't really have any rules just because it hasn't seemed to be necessary. Just keep it chill. And um, if you wanted to know like who can see if you're in a stream, no one can see if you're here or not. So you're safe. <laughs> you can lurk. All right, uh, let's get to it. Let me just show my chat. And, oh, and if you need uh, subtitles, whether English isn't your first language and you want it in your own language, whether you like the reinforcement of being able to read the subtitles uh, or you need closed captioning or you're hearing impaired, there I enable those on my channel and there's a little CC at the top of the window usually. You need to click that and um, the, the subtitles will appear. And you can move those subtitles on the screen just 
click and drag them. Most all devices are different, so I'm kind of speaking generally. So, and I think that I I do a lot of instruction on things like that because there are a lot of folks that just have never been into a live stream, or even spend much time on YouTube. I didn't really either. So, <laughs> all right, let's do it. All right, so we're making the long version, but contrast neckband, tie, and sleeve bands. We have this gorgeous rayon crepe that Helen sent us with this rayon twill for the contrast. And she actually re recommends something a little heavier for those pieces, if you're doing, uh, even if you're not doing contrast, um, because they'll have a little bit more body. And I would agree, and if you don't, and you just wanna do it all in stealth, and you have this really lightweight drapey fabric, consider interfacing it. I think you'll have a little bit easier time handling it, uh, especially for the one that I made for me that's lined with the boiled wool. I absolutely had to add interfacing to those other pieces, those contrast pieces, because the thickness of the garment compared to the neckband, the neckband couldn't compete with that. The, the seam allowances would have been so bulky and visible through the neckband or sleeve bands. So um, I interfaced them. And I only interfaced them with um, some poplin that I had. I don't tend to use fusible interfacing. Oh, that reminds me. Did I get my little, I went three times to go grab my little fusible interfacing piece. Where is it? You know that little one we cut out? Let's see. We got to make sure we have that. I didn't iron it on quite yet. because I didn't want to do that without you. I have all my pieces staged but on the ironing board behind me. Don't judge my ironing board, it's terrible. <laughs> hey Derek, snowy. How's it going? Nice to see you. All right, so snowy south of Scotland. That sounds so like cozy and nice. Okay, let me go look at my interfacing piece. I think I pinned it to a pin cushion, didn't I? Where'd that little guy go? Dang, it's not on this pin cushion. I'm gonna get a little piece of interfacing to do it again. I feel like I lost it. I had it. Let's see here. Yes. Okay. I don't need that. Neck band right here. Sweet. All right. Let's go. <laughs> All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna stay stitch our armholes and our neck bands. Neck line, sorry. So you need your fronts and your back. And we're gonna stay stitch around those openings. Um, this is a pretty important step, especially because of that neck band. Um, if you're cutting this out and you don't get to sew it right away, I'm with you. Sometimes it's that chip away type of thing where you're like, I can cut today and I'll sew in a week. If you can add your stay stitch, some fabrics are a little open weave, like a linen or something. If you can add your stay stitch and then set it aside for however long, I would recommend it. I find some fabrics get a little too relaxed, you know? All right, so I'm gonna go around my neckline. Normally I would do this once the shoulders were sewn in, but I'm gonna follow the instructions. So I'm gonna do it at 3 eighths like they recommend. The seam allowances on this project are half inch. That was roughly 3 eighths. <laughs> if you have questions, uh, please ask them. If you uh, wanna know why I didn't do something or why I don't do something a certain way, I am all about those types of questions. Please feel free. Challenge me or 
ask or whatever. All right, so this is your neck band opening and we're gonna go three eighths all the way around this edge here. Try and be precise about this one. If you need a ruler to draw a line on there, I recommend it because these things like this are the things that uh, cause a lot of folks anxiety to sew. And I think setting yourself up as good as possible is just, it's just like it's such a treat, you know, it's a gift to yourself. And it's kind of hard to know, you know, where to pivot that needle when you go past this raw edge going that way. So if you can't tell where that 3 8 mark is, just draw it on there. I do that often. Or even hold your, you know, your a pin there or something. I have these pinned together at the waist, I think. That's why I'm kind of treating them gingerly. I didn't do my armhole yet. I don't think the armhole is as um, important for stay stitching, except for the fact that it's a very large armhole and you, because you're putting one grain line to a different grain line, you can kind of sometimes get into trouble because say your fabric relaxes and it relaxes, you know, 10%, which would be kind of a lot. That's not a big deal on a length that's this much, but a length that's this much, you're talking, you know, a little bit more. And so you, you kind of want to make that area stable because a cross grain and a length grain are going to act differently and relax differently. They don't relax the same length and width. All right, so we have our neck line there. I'll show you on the wrong side. You might be able to see it a little better. See that right there? Barely, huh? I have the autofocus off, so um, otherwise it kind of does this little crazy thing. So that's why I can't really see it when I get too close. I find the autofocus being off is a little better overall. All right, so these are the armholes. I'm gonna do fronts and the backs. What are you guys making today? I know not all of you are making Suki robes. I know a lot of you have made Suki robes. I saw some gal say she's made she's making five for Christmas gifts or holiday gifts. I can't remember what it was for, but Maybe it was just for the winter season. That was pretty cool. Five, I was like, you deserve a prize. <laughs> also, you gotta love how uh, YouTube does close uh, the subtitles for the word Suki. <laughs> I think they spell it like Suki Stackhouse from um, the book series, <laughs> not S-U-K-I. All right, last armhole, pretty sure. All right, so uh, let's see, next we're gonna do the waist tie and the inner loop and um, the hanging loop. So get all your loops out. So let's see, that would be this one here. This one here. And this one. All right, so you need your waist tie, your side and hanging loops, and your inner tie, all right? I kept the pieces with these because I didn't want to confuse them. Oh yeah, Re Rebecca, that's awesome. You're doing two for gifts. Are you making yourself one? Oh, your power's off for maintenance, Barbara. So you're using all your data on me? That's so sweet. Nursing a hangover, relaxing Nicole, nice. You've made two already. You're one of the testers, nice. That's awesome, Miss Smarty Pants. You're the expert here. <laughs> Give me tips. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm gonna sew these into a tube using half inch seam allowance. And I like to use this little majiggy, a loop turner. That's all it's called, loop turner, to turn my loops. Uh, you can use a safety pin or 
If you know how to use that loop turner kit, my hat is off to you because I can never figure it out. Hello, Living Dreams. What a good name. I'm reading Ready Player Two right now. There's a lot of 80s stuff in it. It's really good. Is your name Liv? Is that why the Liv is capitalized? <laughs> I'm always trying to read into people's usernames. All right, so this is a half inch seam allowance. It's, uh, for me, this would be easy to do incorrectly. Because the what's left after you've got your seam allowance taken care of is a little quarter inch too. All right. These are the kinds of things that I tend to not cut very well. I will admit. Oops. And, um... It's really apparent when I go to sew it because the, the sides are a little hard to line up. Anyone, anyone uh, do that too? And especially with these rayons. These rayons can be wishy. They're a little tricky to handle sometimes. Okay, trim it down because you need that seam allowance to fit into the tube itself. We're just going to do this for all of these. Hey, Allison. Oh, nice, Jennifer. Look at all you Suki experts. That's awesome. Oh, is it really? Um, my husband said, uh, I think it was Colbert teased him for how slow he speaks. <laughs> I told my husband, I'm like, well, you know, at least on Audible, you can actually speed up the, re the narrator, like one and a half or double speed. You can even slow it down too, it's pretty neat. I'm listening to Ready Player Two and I'm not gonna spoil anything for you, but I'm into it. Yeah, Nicole, that's because the, um, that happens to me too. I think that is partly your uh, stitch line is, is tightening up the fabric, like drawing it in. It can be a combination of your your, how you're sti I'm having trouble getting this started right now, which is really annoying. Um, it could be a combination of the fabric and you just can't do much about it or the, um, stitches, stitching is just tight. So you just gotta be careful with it. This is a loop turner, Morgan. Uh, usually it's a piece of cake and, um, I'm having a little trouble right now. So maybe I'll try the other end. Usually if you just get that little bit, so what I've learned with using this, and I've been using one of these, uh, oh, it's kind of embarrassing how long. My school, I went to a, a, design, a fashion design school. This was actually in the kit they give us when you start. And I've been using one ever since. So my tip when you're using these is to try, don't bite off more than you can chew. This is the, 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 the abbreviated, abbreviated way of saying it. Just try and get it started and just stick to it right here. Stay at this end. Don't start sliding from here. Just stay down here because you don't want it to pop off the end because it's just on a hook. You don't want to have to pull too hard because you don't want to tear your fabric. And um, it, a lot of it with these really skinny tubes, a lot of fabric can't go in there at one time. So you just need to do a little bit. And so I, when I get close to the end here, I actually slide it and pull off the loop turner so I can hold it with my hand because I find it, um, then I won't run the risk of tearing the, you know, like tearing it out at the end. So, hey Pauline, welcome. Oh, nice. <laughs> My laugh, oh gosh. I um, watched a little of one of my streams recently because I was looking for something and Usually I can get past watching myself, but I was having a little trouble that day. I was like, oh yeah, we gotta stop watching. <laughs> you have, Nancy? So I've only broken one, but I have to admit I had had it for like 15 years. So I didn't even break it. It was just this little thing just finally disappeared. I don't find that they're very helpful on really heavy duty fabrics. You can do it maybe on quilting cotton. And I feel like that's about the, the weight of it, unless you're doing it like on a knit or something uh, pretty soft. 
or it's a big opening, like not this really skinny one. Look at how terrible I cut that one right there. I cut these out at the same time, didn't I? Oh, I may not have. I was cutting in scrap. It's a tie on the inside of your robe. Don't sweat it too much. It's okay. So on the heavy duty ties and things like that, I don't use my loop turner. In fact, I just try not to have to turn it right side out at all. See, all you future people are really lucky. You can just fast forward through all this. But see, I love doing this at the beginning of your sewing. In other words, we don't need this tie for a while, but we're making it right now. So you don't have to make it right now. But the thing is, it's so nice when you get to the step that you need it and it's just done and sitting there waiting for you. It's like a little gift to yourself, right? And I feel that way about a lot of these little things. So I, typically when I'm sewing on my own, I will do that. I get everything ready. The order of operations on a pattern generally is you assemble all the bits and bobs, like you assemble all your ties, you put your pockets on, you do any of the little things that aren't structural to the garment. Then you start with your shoulders. Then you start with, um, or you, you would do your, any of your shaping, you know, your darts. Then you would start with your shoulders, your side seams, things like that. So yeah. Yeah, the loop turner kit, I cannot get that thing to work for me. I should have put it in one of my giveaways. I've never gotten it to work. Yes, and this is a really great warm up. You kind of get to know your fabric. You kind of start thinking about the, the order and the sewing of your whole project. So it is kind of a nice little way to kind of get in gear. I also stick this in here to kind of straighten out my end. But if it grabs the fabric really easily, I love using an awl. You're gonna see me use an awl a lot. I'm not sponsored. You can see I've used this one for so long, it's yellowed. <laughs> it's my second all. I had one of these in my kit when I went to the college as well, but the other one had just a blue uh, handle and it didn't have a brand on it. And someone stole that one. <laughs> so, such, a, such a weird thing to take, but they, they were really hard to find for a while. All right, so uh, we hadn't decided on our belt loops. So we decided to cut both. Yes, I am gonna use mustard thread on this. Just because uh, we're already giving ourselves the option of having both belt loops. I actually think we're gonna want these only because if your belt's not on there, well, I don't know. I'm really torn on this one. So we did both because the wa the waistband is in this blue fabric. So this blue fabric's a little heavier, so let's see how it does. In fact, I'm gonna trim this down a little bit more. Hey Terry, how's it going? Yeah, Barbara, that's a really good way to put it. It's like chopping all your ingredients. You know, my husband does a lot of the cooking. I know I say this all the time. Um, but a long time ago, when he used to work out of the home and I worked at home, um, I would sometimes, I didn't know what he'd be making for dinner, but I would just cut up an onion for him. <laughs> Cause you know, almost always you need an onion. <laughs> and he loved that. Like it made him more motivated to make whatever he was gonna make because like some of the stuff was already cut for him. And it was one way I could help and show my appreciation that he did that, you know? Hey Sydney, how's it going? Straw, yes, exactly Nicole. <laughs> yeah, I have that whole kit right here. Let's see. So this is what they're talking about, you guys. There's this. I literally think this and this is the exact demonstration of how humanity learns. <laughs> this is the difference. I can't figure this thing out. I see people use it and I, I've tried. You guys watch me try once. I couldn't get it to work. I also like that with the, this thing, I only need one item and I usually hang it on the wall. Like if I didn't have a stream set up and my, my machine was near a wall, I would just hang it on the wall. So I didn't lose it or anything. It didn't get stuck or stepped on, you know, but this, yeah, I've never used it. I tried, I put it back in the package. Yeah, they are Nicole. Hmm. 
Yeah, they are. No, he's a gem. I'm gonna start the other end because I can't I can't tell if I cut that badly or if I'm pulling on it. Alright, so this is my last small tie. And then I have the waist tie. Oh yeah, this is cut really badly. How's this cut so badly? We're going to hopefully fix it. I see you can see like it doesn't really want to. I can't I don't know if you can see. Oh yeah, this is like I may have to use the other one. I don't want I don't want any torquing, you know? This one's gonna get cut up, right? This one gets cut up into the belt loops and the neck loop. Yeah, you lost some of your pieces. Oh see now that would be a, a real bummer. Okay, that ended up going pretty good, surprisingly. Let's put this over here. I don't lose it. <laughs> You're playing a board game and you gave up? You're no quitter. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, right, Melinda? It is. It's kind of a nice little thing, you know. I never ever expect it. I just don't because why well, would really hate it if someone expected me to make dinner? And I know that that's not the case for a lot of folks and dang, I like I have no judgment at all. I know I have got it good and, and, and I'm really lucky. I don't think my boyfriend ever, or he's my husband now, but at the time, I don't think my boyfriend would have ever had any, um, can, any ideas that I would be doing the cooking in a relationship. <laughs> so it's not like I, I hoodwinked him or anything. Um, in fact, my maiden name is Graves. And um, some of the things I would cook and make up for meals, he would call me Gourmet Graves. <laughs> that's, that's his nickname when I'm in the kitchen for me is Gourmet Graves. That it's not necessarily a compliment. It, it, it's definitely a, um, I survived the mean streets of being single um, and fending for myself. Because <laughs> I, I have been known to make a pizza using a bobbly refried beans and Parmesan cheese, you know, that kind of thing. And I'm not a bad cook. I just don't do it. I just don't like it. So anyway. Yeah, Nancy, see, I'm telling you, it's like this little, it's like a... a you know, like a Myers-Briggs test, you know, this versus the other thing, you know. <laughs> all right, uh, we need to iron these, but we're going to do the waist tie and then we're going to do them all at the same time. So we have our waist tie. And uh, this is a, oh, all right, I'll change the blue thread. Um. Is it really, Tanya? Oh, I've never met another Graves. Are you in the United States? Are we related? Yeah, right, Melinda? I'm the baker. See, I should qualify the fact that I uh, do meals that are baking-ish, you know, like um, pot pie, lasagna, meatloaf. I made, okay, I, sh I really shouldn't sell myself short because I, I kind of get into like things like that. Like I made a uh, sopes recently. Um, I made corn tortillas the other day that actually turned out really good. Um, I like things like that. I like little projects like that. I used to can like a ton. <laughs> I, I could almost guarantee there's no one I know who's canned more than me. So, um... Yeah, I used to can a ton. We had an orchard. It's kind of part of the drill. All right, so the waist ties on the Suki are separate. So don't sew these two together. You can do that if you want. If you really want a continuous robe tie, like a belt, and you want it to be separate from your robe, you could um, cut, or not cut, you could uh, sew these at the center back together if you want. Your tie's gonna get a little bit shorter, about, about this much shorter. Um, but, 
overall because this is going to get sewn to the robe but these are sewn to the back of the robe and i really love this because it makes it so that um, your ties don't fall off your robe but it does mean that when they're in the laundry you may you know they may be like doing some fun stuff in there so we're going to sew it a half inch seam allowance you're going to leave the short end open put it right sides together and there's this point right here we're going to fold it along this whoops this point here that wasn't a point before over there the right sides together if you left the notches on there you can line up your notches which is a really great way to make sure that this kind of long narrow thing doesn't get um, twisted or torque they always make fun of me for saying torque <laughs> Nancy exactly are you really Tanya that's so funny that's so funny I know that um, the graves settled I feel like in the in the Midwest, I want to say it's terrible. That I don't know this. Um, they're very Scandinavian, like Indiana and um, Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota area. Those areas are close together, right? I don't. I know. I'm terrible at geography. This is a, a ten cell rayon ten cell, isn't it great? And so this has a little bit more weight than the rayon crepe. But like I said, if you, if you wanted to use a lighter weight fabric, you could interface it with fusible or using a um, sew-in. I usually use fabric. And you could choose to interface only half of it or the whole thing. Don't just use your judgment. Because you can't make it too stiff. It's got a tie, right? One more stitch. It's always hard to judge your, your uh, pivot point, isn't it? All right, keep that point nice. Now, I have to say, like, these kinds of points are always a little tricky. Like, if I let my needle go off the end, we know that it's going to kind of pull, make a little pucker. If I go too short, I'm going to get a little pucker as well. So if you can try and nail it, where your needle is like hitting that fold. Good job. I'm gonna try and get it better. Even your back stitch is gonna pull it up a little bit. All right, now clip this corner. And I'm gonna shape this a little bit like this. This little corner is not gonna be as hard to um, get to lay nicely inside as the other one. Did you really, Sydney? Wow. <laughs> yeah, does that work, Nancy? I was asking my mom, I was like, do you think Michael needs, and I said, like, this um, appliance. And then we had, like, a little chat, and I was like, wait a minute, is this like, is this like buying a vacuum for mom on, on Mother's Day? And she was like, I think it might be. I was like, all right, let's not talk about this then. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not like, hey, to make all those dinners you're making me a lot easier. <laughs> the belt, with the belt and loose, and when it comes out, yeah, right, Louise, I know. Really, Nicole? What the heck? Hi, Lisa. Nice to see you. It looks like my fold got a little off right there. Trying. This is one of those things that uh, if you cut it the right width and on grain, it's going to be a lot easier to sew. But those um, notches are going to be nice and helpful. So on this little corner here, it's really easy to let it want to get stretched out. So just fold it on this point right here. Let it relax and it'll stay because this is on the bias right here it's going to want to do something different I see I have that little pucker there I'm gonna try and get rid of that trim that off I'm gonna do a comparison I'm just gonna lop this corner off see which one I like better 
All right, so let's turn this right side out. So the loop turner for something like this, I have to admit is it can be a little dicey. So I'm gonna poke it through this stitching right here. It's better than poking it through that little um, point there. It's pretty small. So poke it through, but it's a little dicey. <laughs> Dairy. No! <laughs> he needs to start running things by us. <laughs> oh, Nicole. <laughs> Oops, there goes my pin cushion. I try not to pull too hard because I don't want to damage. Oh, look at that. <laughs> it was only holding by a thread. Like I said, don't pull down here, pull close to the end. Just do a little bit at a time. It seems slower, but trust me, it's faster in the long run because you didn't um, get it all hung up. All right, so I have these little extra threads here. I'm gonna trim those because my loop turner pulled those out and hopefully we can just get them back in there, no problem. And um, this, I love my awl for this. I use a tapered tailor's awl. It's different than a regular awl because the regular awl is a lot sharper. It's longer, thinner. It's just, it's, it's much sharper. This looks sharp and it is sharp, but, um, there's something about this tapered tailors all that doesn't damage the fabric. And I can use it like, um, like a pointy finger when I'm sewing really close to my needle, which you'll see me do a lot with binding and things like that. But I can also pull this out without damaging the fabric. Like it doesn't poke a hole in the fabric. So that's, that's pretty good. I probably could have cut that down a little bit more in there because I can kind of feel it, but I got a pretty good point. So maybe I just won't argue with that. And maybe I'll trim this down a little bit more. So this is the way to look at it. Anytime you're, you have like a stitch line and all of this is gonna turn right side out, you can do an experiment, fold this fabric along that stitch line and see all that extra fabric still hanging off. So let's go like this. That's way better. See, it was just counterintuitive to do it the other way. See, now that'll all fit in there better. I kind of toyed with the camera today and zooming it in more, but the thing is you lose a lot of surface area. So see that stitch line? Because we're gonna turn it inside out, that's how it's folding, right? Before, if this weren't on here, all that's hanging past the fold. So you gotta get rid of that, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Nicole, that's so funny. That is funny because I've heard people say that and I, w as much as I would love to think that lots of people are using the um, all, um, I don't want it to ever be out of stock. I'm always nervous. In fact, I have one here, it's still in the package. I can show you, this is what it looks like. This is the one I have. Um, oh, I can't take that off so you can't see it, but this is what it looks like. Oh no, this is a seam ripper. I, I lie. I don't have a backup one. That makes me nervous. <laughs> oh, maybe I do at home. No, I don't have a backup one. Eh, you know, so, um, no, it doesn't. I, some really open weave fabrics, yes. But if that's the case, you're using like a really open weave, relaxed fabric, like linens and hemp's and things like that, uh, shorten your stitch length. It'll make get putting your loop turner a little tricky to get through this between the stitches. So you might have to use a safety pin, but even a safety pin would be pr pretty tricky on this one. But honestly, this is a pretty big opening. You probably could just go like this. You know what I mean? A rototiller for your garden. Hey, Walter, how's it going? How's Montana? The, uh, neither Vivian. I use the tapered Taylor's all from Clover. I think the straight might be that really pointy one. It definitely says uh, tapered on the package. Yeah, oh, that's the word I'm looking for. The other kind is like a stiletto. 
if you find you're pushing a little too hard on to seam rip, Lisa, yeah, I would get a new seam ripper. Because that can end badly. You know what I mean? Like, you could end up uh, cutting your uh, fabric. It's just like a dull knife or scissors, right? You end up having to, like, push harder. Um, yeah. I, I uh, definitely recommend that. I don't get one very often, though. I probably have sewn over a hundred things very easily this year. Um, and I have a got, I think I got a new one at the beginning of the year and I feel like mine's still pretty good. So it just depends on what you're doing. Maybe if you do a lot of uh, synthetics or a lot of seam ripping, maybe cause like the nature of what you sew, you're having to seam rip a lot because of removing seams, not because of mistakes, but even if you're doing a lot of mistakes, it doesn't matter. It is a little blade, you know, that's a blade at the base of that right there. All right, we're ready to iron. <laughs> this is like lots of prep. We're gonna get into the really good stuff in just a second. So let's iron. Let's prep all these, we're going the extra mile now. I gotta heat up my iron again. So I can see the chat. Yeah, no worries, Walter. Oh, hello from Vancouver as well, Vivian. I mean, I'm not from Vancouver. I mean, as well, because uh, you aren't alone. There were a few folks here on Thursday from Vancouver. All right, so we have our, this is our belt loops and we have two different choices. And these are our inner ties. And then we have our waistband. So I'm just gonna iron these guys because they re it really makes it look like I did a good job. <laughs> you gotta do that for yourself, you know? I made these out of a different linen that I did on the for my contrast bands on my Suki. And um, it really made a huge difference because you know that linen gets really wrinkly when it gets turned. Come on, iron, warm up. So I walked into my office today and there was a bird in here again. And uh, I actually was able to catch this one pretty easily. It didn't take like three of us, but um, it was very exciting. And it was so cute. And so happy to get out of my shop. <laughs> All right. So I find, uh, just full disclosure, if you're having this issue, Sometimes this, you see the seam going across right there. Here is my feeling on this. Sometimes that happens. The seam will kind of go back and forth across the back. I don't fight it. I have tried to fight it. And in some cases you need to fight it, but I don't when it just wants to sit. Look how nice and relaxed that is right now. And you can't even see from the other side that it's doing that. Um, this is the belt loops and the hanging loop. So there's a chance that we can get three, four inch pieces and kind of lop that piece off and not even worry about it. Um, the other thing, even if it's going back and forth on it, if it's laying like that naturally and nice and relaxed, I go with it because fighting it sometimes, especially if this seam got so tight, yours is curved like this. Just trying to cover all the bases because sometimes that happens, you know. Hi, Eliza. Hi, Una. Um... So um, I don't worry about it and don't be hard on yourself. That happens to me all the time. I just kind of let it do its thing because it's not such a critical piece that's visual to everyone else or like this one. See, it's already, can you even see it? Like, look, here's the seam. It's doing that naturally. So I'm gonna try, you know, I'm gonna turn it. This is a little thicker. So look at this, it looks really tiny. It's amazing the different different fabrics, how they react. Not too bad. All right, so we have those those things there. Let's put them over there out of the way so I don't drop them. And then now we're going to do our best to iron this. I'm gonna kind of iron the seam a little bit, just a little bit. I'm not doing it like flat. I'm just doing the kind of the tip. Sometimes I have some good luck doing that and I'll show you why. It'll just, it'll just uh, fold along that edge a lot better if I can kind of press that seam to one side. So now I'm going to 
try and get that fold right on the edge best I can. So if you're doing like a robe that's maybe in something uh, completely different like um, minky or polar fleece or something super gushy and cozy, you're probably not ironing. Just wanna, that's calcium. There's a lot of calcium where I live in the water. A lot of minerals where I live. It's volcano territory here. Okay, try and just get that the best you can. Just roll it in your fingers. Oh, that's right, Malin. Congratulations, I saw that you won, um, what's her name, a uh, Tomcat uh, Stitchery, right? her work from home challenge. That's pretty cool. What did I just see? Hey, Ray. Ray, thank you. How's it going? She's probably uh, not able to chat. <laughs> Watching on her TV as well. Hello, Priscilla. Welcome, welcome. All right, how'd I do there? I have this little, uh, I don't know if you can even see that. <laughs> thank you, Ray. Yep, she says, hi, all lurking today. Now I see it. Hi, Lisa. How's it going? Or Kia. <laughs> um, I don't know if you can see right here, but you can see on the end, see right here, there's a little snag in this fabric that I didn't notice. Let's see if I can pull it. This is a fabric thing. I might be able to just pull it and get it to relax right there. We'll do our best. That's front and center, right? That's the front of your tie. And I send this to, to uh, Helen's closet, so trust me, I, I'm nervous too. Oh wait, we have a lot. Oh, our seam came undone. Oh. I'm gonna rage quit on that for a second. Wow. I feel betrayed absolutely feel betrayed <laughs> Ow. that's awesome nancy <laughs> my husband gave me an early christmas gift last night because i was trying to watch the stream that was going for like 10 hours longer than normal, but they were doing this challenge and I wanted to see them succeed. And um, uh, I, I was looking for headphones. I don't have headphones and so on my uh, phone and he had bought me AirPods for Christmas. That was really sweet. And I instantly was using them. Those things, I w really wish someone had told me how cool those things are. I didn't realize that like you, if you take them out of your ears, it knows and it pauses your book. Then I started listening to my book. <laughs> I still gotta fix that other tie. What? Oh, and nah. Thank you. Five euros. Oh, you gotta love. You love to see that. That's so fun. Thank you, Una. How was Ireland today? You're in Dublin, right? I've been to Dublin. I loved it. I actually stayed in the youth hostel in Dublin with my mom and sister. My mom and sister still bring it up because I went out into the hallway in my underwear and yelled at some people <laughs> for being loud. I was a youth hostel. What was I thinking? Who cares? <laughs> I was just really tired. We were all really tired of each other right then, too. All right, let's fix this. Oh, no worries, Eliza. I almost checked on you, but I didn't want you to feel bad. You know? No worries. Hi. Sometimes it's, aren't you glad sometimes that stuff slips your mind? 
Because then you're like, ah, oh, okay, I don't feel the, I didn't feel the pressure in the moment to do it, you know? Because it's not a big deal. All right, here's my uh, naughty one. God dang it. I'll do this quickly, I promise. Fast forward. Sorry, you can't right now. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I know. All right. We're gonna get to all the fun stuff as soon as we're done prepping all these pieces, I promise. Oh, this really wants to stay like this now. So I'm just gonna try, I wish I could just poke this out, you know? Okay, here we go. I'm just gonna do a little bit. Is this my first one? Oh, well, at least I can trim that down now. There's a good thing, right? <laughs> yeah, they loved it. Because they weren't going to do it. Funny, fun fact about me, the only beer I have ever drunk in my life and finished was a Guinness in Dublin, and it was hard. I'm not a beer drinker, but I did it for all my guy friends. They were like, have a, have a Guinness for us. Thanks for following, ladies. That might have been on Twitch, and that's why I didn't show up here. Oh, yeah, that was on Twitch. I wish I was streaming on Twitch still. Oh, cold and misty. It's such a pretty city though. I, I really I really found it to be not very big, like it was very manageable, you know? All right, we're back on track. Look at that. I didn't have to torture you guys too much on that. Let's use the awl. When I use the awl like this, I, I have to say, there's a, I'm doing a lot with my hands. I'm actually holding this pretty firmly. I don't wanna pull it out too quickly. I tend to, I know this about myself. I tend to kind of charge ahead and I've, I'm always rushing. It's kind of the production sewer in me. So I kind of hold this a little firmly so that I don't pull this out too quickly and rip it or pull, poke the threads out, you know? So, all right, there we go. We're just gonna set that there. That first step was a doozy, eh? All right, let's see. We're gonna finish our inner ties, which are these two longer ones, not that shorter one. We're gonna finish one end. We're gonna switch this also back to our mustard. Hi, Elena, nice to see you. You taking off, Louise? Did I, did I, okay, have fun. Say hi to your family for us. Thanks for stopping by. Now that's a good question. Oh, shoot. Don't you dare fall on the ground. My husband, when he went to Ireland, we went separately. He went with his father and brother. I went with my mom and sister. Kind of a coincidence. And uh, he went on a, a few whiskey tours. He, he really likes whiskey and he collects them. Okay. We're going to finish one end of our tie. And I, I admit, I find this to be a little fussy to sew, this type of like really small little hems like this. So do your best. You could even do it with hand sewing if you want. I'm going to hold this with my awl. And um, I think... Did I get it on there? I did. I got it. Hmm. Do I want to see how the back looks? It's not too bad. My issue with sewing these is that sometimes this little turn back thing wants to poke out. So I think I'm going to sew twice across it. Okay. 
that's just one of my own personal pet peeves of things like uh, back pockets and things like that when that little raw edge peeks out or just, just the threads that are unraveling off the end peek out. That kind of annoys me. All right, so this one looks the, this one's the one with the little angle. These are both my long ones, okay. Let's trim this down a little bit so it's nice and flush. And we're gonna cover up that little, <laughs> that, little that little seam wonkiness, right? Would you rather it rain than snow? Uh, you totally could, Barbara. It does make turning it right side out a little trickier sometimes. I was kind of thankful they did it this way because my loop turner probably would have kind of munched the end of that fabric, but you totally can sew across the end and then down the long side and then turn it right side out. I'm gonna do both. Clean up the other side. I don't know about you, but mine does add little threads to the back. I can see one more I'm trying to grab. You probably can't see it. There it is. There we go. All right, so now we have our ties ready. What's next? Pockets. All right, get your pockets out. All right, so we're gonna sew the pockets to the front and back. Now, um, I'm French seaming things today. You don't need to. You could zigzag or overlock these pieces and um, you can do it now overlock this the curved edge of these pieces um, you might as well do the short end as well because of the way that we're going to sew it in um, and then you should also do your side seams as well all right so I have my back here I have these um, pins you see that that's where the belt goes so I'm just going to make sure all these are secure I take them off just like that see this one right here is not right I just poke them through and then I pull it apart and now I'm gonna secure these pins now these pins these are pretty fine these red ones especially are fine sewing pins and um, as nice as they are, they fall out of my sewing my garments often. So I, I tend to, I'm, I've been doing an, a pin experiment all year and I'm kind of leaning towards going back to just using quilting pins. They're a little big and fat, but they're really strong and they don't fall out of my, my uh, work unless it's a really lightweight fabric because the pin's kind of heavy, you know? So it did, Eliza? Oh, that's weird. I wonder if you tried joining, I missed it. You don't have to shovel rain. Yeah, I totally agree, Nancy. It does call out for French seams. Buy a shovel and ice melt. Ooh. I don't have to worry about those things. But I don't make any apologies because we have fire. So <laughs> I'd much rather deal with snow, I think. All right, so we're going to put the, this is the back. You can start in the front or the back. And then we have lots of notches on the side because we can we have uh, those dots for our belt loop and we have our pocket. And so we're gonna line it up, right sides together. Actually, I'm gonna do this wrong sides together because we're gonna do a French seam. I almost forgot. I do this a lot when I'm doing French seam uh, pockets. Um, I will sometimes forget to do this one a French seam, this particular seam. So we're gonna do a French seam though. So I'm gonna do, it's a half inch total seam allowance. So it's a little skint for a French seam, but totally doable. So I'm gonna do an eighth inch first. My notches are, uh, some of them are going in through my seam allowance. I'm not worried about it because, I'm gonna shorten my seam, my stitches a little bit, because we have one more seam to go and that's going to, encase that. All right, so I'm not going to trim that until I'm ready, mainly because it's just going to fray if I do before I get to it, right? All right, line up your notches, 
I'm just looking for the two that match the ones on the pocket. Is it these two? No. It is these two down here. There we go. Same thing, wrong sides together for the French seam. If you're doing a regular seam, because you've finished all your edges, you're going to do this right sides together at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. That's what they recommend. I normally would just do the, the half inch. Uh, so if you accidentally do that, it'll be fine. But I like that they kind of give you the option to do 3 8 first. Kind of make sure your seam gets tucked in there. Right, we're going to trim this a little bit. Mainly because we don't want all these little hairs showing through our seam. But we also have a little bit of seam allowance to work with, so they're kind of far away from that. There's our other one. There we go. Trim this as well. Now at the top here, you can actually clip into your seam if you need to right now, but I don't usually need to quite yet. So just trim this down a tiny bit. So you can see my little notch went through the seam. That's totally fine. All right, try and keep that Nice, because we're going to press it and then we're going to do our next one. Yes, I do. I do French, I do a uh, backstitch. <laughs> Are you serious, Nancy? So what does that mean, California? <laughs> Where are we going to be? Not that we're wine country, but there's a lot of that. All right, so let's see. Here is our, one of our fronts. Let me show it to you from this side. Wrong sides together again. Um, if you, I have a dedicated video to sewing in seam pockets um, for French seams. If you're here for that, it's in that that uh, pair of pants I made in the matching poppy fabric. Nice eye candy that fabric is, isn't it? All right, where's my notches? It's quite a few on the front here. I tried not to cut too far in. That's not them. There's my double notch there. I remember that one. There it is. Okay. All right. I'm gonna do an eighth inch seam. Now, if I had a five eighth inch seam allowance, or if you're doing this with something with five eight, I would do a quarter inch for your first pass. And then you have three eighths left for your second pass. And it doesn't matter how much you trim off. You've already used the seam allowance. So don't think, oh, I trimmed off that much. I just lost some of my seam allowance. That's not how it works. All right, there's one front. Here's my other front. And then we're gonna iron these and then we're gonna do the seam. The last seam, where is it? I have it upside down. Yeah, here we go. Uh, oh gosh, I just thought I had one pocket going the wrong way. <laughs> Oh, don't say that, Nancy. 50 years. Well, I'll be 99. Oof. We talk about that a lot, like things like that. All right, so there's the double. My I, my bar notches are barely there. That's why I'm kind of struggling to see them. There we go. You do sew everything twice with French seams, but heck, it's just such a nice finish. It really doesn't take that much more time. It probably feels like it because you're watching me, but when you do it, it won't.
It always feels really awkward to cut under the camera. All right. All right, so we're gonna take this to the iron, press these open and then to one side. What other questions you got, Nicole? Just ask, no problem. You'll be 112. Dang, you won't be drinking that wine then I don't think. All right, so with French seams, um, I definitely am one of those people that loves to take shortcuts and stuff, but I will say doing this, pressing the seam allowance one direction, it doesn't matter what direction you do, just press one of them, press it one direction first. See how I did on that side. And then when you press it on the seam, it's really easy and it's so nice. It's, and, it, and your French seam will be easier to sew overall and look nicer. So even if you're not going for look nicer and you're going for easy, this is it. Because um, easy is always faster, right? That, this is the shortcut, <laughs> doing all the steps. <laughs> All right, you can press it from either side, it doesn't matter what side, just press it so that the seam allowance goes one direction. Make sure I did, yep. And now on the seam itself. This is the ASMR part of the stream, people say. All right. Don't forget to hit the like button. I was like, what did you say? I have to forget. Yeah, that does help. Thank you, Nancy. I've made it a habit now when I join someone's stream. I always hit like before I say anything. So I don't forget. Because sometimes I'm like, oh, God, I got to go. And then I just shut my phone, you know. Oh, it's not attached. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. We'll take that. All right. Last one. It's like doing exercises. Last one. Turn. And press. Tell us we need a little. There we go. All right, sew these up. Oh, thank you, Beverly. That's true. Yeah, and they're. I think they're. Uh, playlists are kind of funny to organize, but the the short how tos, which I know a lot of people would prefer, they're in a playlist called something like um, short how tos or quick how tos. You know, some of them aren't quick, but you can tell right away. They're just there because it's the only version I, of that kind of how-to I have. Iron over a damp magic eraser to clean my iron. So, oh, I've never done that before. Oh yeah, Nicole. I find that really fiddly too. My iron shoots steam out the front above the plate too. So I would burn my fingers if I did that. And I only iron with steam. So, oh, Sydney, let's see. I can't believe I haven't looked at How do you clean the face plates? Oh, I, I've never tried Nancy's trick, but um, I get iron cleaner. There, there's a tube of iron cleaner that you can get. If you have stuff stuck to your sole plate, I highly recommend getting the iron cleaner. And then, um, if you need to clean out the the steam holes, Google that. Ray Ann used to do that for our iron, um, so I always have to Google it now. But um, there's a way to do it. There's like usually a self clean function on your iron. It's super easy to do, and it, in my area it's really important because like I showed you, there's a lot of minerals in our water here. Yeah, iron off exactly, Jennifer. 
I was gonna say, I almost said Jenner off. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I don't want you to cook your fingers. All right, so now we have this pressed. Now we're just gonna sew the remaining seam allowance on this seam right here. So, you know, I know I have about three eighths, but I'm gonna go a little under just because I probably wasn't that accurate with that, you know, with that eighth inch to begin with. My machine sounds funny. There you go, there's one. Let's do this one. And we can check it. Let's see if there's any little furries. No, nope, that looks pretty good. I was pretty conservative on this one. Is this the front? Oh, this is the front, okay. Oh, no. Don't touch the ground. I swept, but that is no guarantee in this place. Oh, an unused dryer sheet. Dang, you guys have good tips. You guys just love the hive mind. Okay, does anyone know how to raise olives? <laughs> That's my current thing I'm Googling. <laughs> we have 100 year old olive trees on our property and I think they're right. I thought I had a few months because when we looked at this place, it was April and there were olives all over the ground. Apparently, the olives are going to be here a while, but now is the time. I know I need to brine them. I know stuff like that, but like, how, how do I tell to pick them right now? I'm nervous. Cheap potato vodka and water spray. For starch? I've never used starch in my life. There you go. You feel better? And I hang out, uh, the quilters, or the sewers I hang out with in real life um, are quilters, and they use all kinds of starch. So I, I'm learning about it. I can see my uh, seam is, is trying to create little bumps along here, so I was just trying to get it to not do that. I might have my... Um, pressure kind of high. I, I tend to sew with a lot of pressure. I'm about to do a video or upload a video that talks about why I sew on an industrial because I don't believe everyone needs to sew on one. I just really like it and I, just, I, get, a, I get kind of questions from people that I don't think join our live stream very often and um, that, that's what they ask me about. Or they ask me like, it's just like how to do things, you know, and I'm like, well, I don't know you, so I'm not going to make a video just for that, but I am going to do one on my, I'm going to do one on this industrial versus my old industrial without electronics, because I know there's a lot of you that are like, I, I'm kind of interested in an industrial machine, but the price of the electronics is, is what the stumbling block is, because that's the price, like the, a regular industrial is very affordable. The electronics, like me being able to do like this and clip the thread, those are the electronics. Um, I'm gonna do, a, I'm gonna sew a Notions case on this one, that one, and my home machine, so you can see the difference. So, <laughs> all right, so we have all of our pockets on here now. Let's see what's next. Um, loops to the side seam. I think these go to the um, front, though. Is this a front? Yeah, this is a front. And there's uh, the double notches, right? Where's those double notches? I think that's it right there. I hope so. So now you're gonna get your, oh, we didn't cut the loops yet. So now we gotta decide, you guys. Gotta decide. So do we want our belt loops to match the row or do we want it to match the belt? Oh, Allison, thank you. <laughs> I don't even know what GLHF means. I see people use it. I'm sorry. Is it good luck? Have fun. That was a good guess. I think. Thank you. Really need to change that alert to the swimming Corgi because it's just so good. Where do you purchase an industrial sewing machine at? I've done both. I've done it in person. There is a pretty big sewing center in Sacramento, which is about an hour and a half from here. It's a little less. Um, and then um, you can do it on Craigslist. Buying used is a great way to go. Um, yeah, thanks, Allison. That's awesome. 
Um, and then I've mail ordered them as well. I was looking for a specific machine, my uh, my old one, which was is the Juki 5550-6. And um, I found two, they had more than that, but I just found, found that they were willing to ship and they shipped them to me on a pallet with the head in the machine. So I didn't have to do that part. Uh, putting the head into the machine into the table because the motor is on the table um it's not hard on one without electronics but it's a little tricky with electronics so all i had to do is add oil i had to get the machine into my office and add oil to the pan when you tilt this back there's oil in there so i'll talk about that in a video but yeah i think you're right i think you guys are right let's do matchy matchy all right so let's uh see i'm gonna i have a little ruler right here so this is pretty much almost exactly the 12 inches so Cut it into four pieces. There we go. Now remember, you just lost your back stitch on all those practically, so be careful with them. And we're gonna put our, is our, is our belt really gonna fit through there? I have doubts. <laughs> it won't. Is that because it's supposed to fold? Did I do something wrong? <laughs> All right, so let's put the loop and you should have two notches on the side seam and you're going to do it to the top one. Oh, you have a sail ride. They have such great videos. Aren't they the folks that do a lot of industrial machine videos? I sometimes get into a loop of watching those. When I was researching my binding attachment, where's my, there it is. There's two notches there. Okay, so that is the one. So I think they may show it like this, where you're putting, um, see it's flat and I'm going like this. I see, I think I see it like this in the instructions or you can go like this. I think I'm gonna do this because it gives me a little more room, you know? Yeah, I think so. I think if you're not wearing the belt, then, you know, if you're not wearing the belt, then your loops will disappear. All right. Let's get another one. Hopefully I did that correctly. <laughs> okay. This is the back. Where's that other front? I'm going to put them both on the front so I make sure I have one on the left and one on the right. Or uh, you could just do them both on the back side. It doesn't really matter. My first industrials were always used. Uh, I'm a big proponent of that. Just make sure you get to try it out. Bring what you're gonna sew and then you sew on it. Um, the other thing to think about is um, if you have a mechanic you can use. You want a walking foot, Walter? Three pieces. Oh, because you need a, a neck loop for the back, Mullen. Yeah, those sail art videos are good. Yeah, I, I found those when I was looking for my, uh, when I was looking for my um, binding attachment. I'm going to put this, I'm going to magnetize this to my machine. So when I forget where that's at, that's where it's at. All right. So now let's see, we got our loops on there. So if you are not doing fringe seams, you're going to want to finish your side seams, zigzag or serger. or so all your side seams, right? Um, and then we're gonna now do our shoulder seams. I'm doing the front seams, right? So this is my back. Well, I just heard a pin hit the floor, so now I've lost the pin. And then we're going to make sure you get your center front, which is this squared off opening towards the front. I say that because when I first sewed my one sitting behind me, I didn't do that. And I had one front backwards. Oh, that's cool, Sydney. Hi, Kevin. Nice to see you. All right. And I only cut three pieces, Malin. Two belt loops and a neck loop. That's what it was. Did it look like uh, four? I could not say that number uh, while I was looking at my seam allowance there. All right. So French seaming it. Eighth inch first. 
Try not to pull. I'm really mostly telling myself that. Trim that now. I really like trimming these seams when I'm doing French seams with a rotary knife. I don't know what it is. For me, I'm more comfortable with that. I think other people probably feel completely the opposite. Uh, but I feel a little more in control. I think also because the act of taking it to a table that I can rotary knife it um, feels a little more in, like I'm going to have the garment on a bigger surface flat and spread out so I don't have any risk of cutting something underneath it. So maybe that's part partly why I like doing it that way. Um, but you just do what you feel is right. I'm doing it with scissors under the cameras because it is faster and we're here, right? But it is a little awkward. And we've definitely seen Sarah me make some really bad <clears throat> mistakes. <laughs> That's what I was thinking, Beverly. That's what I was thinking too. It doesn't need to sit flat against the body. I kind of like that, right? Because then it is a little more secure. You know, especially if you're doing like a silk charmeuse robe i mean you might slip off the bed if you sit down in one of those but it'd be really nice all right let's uh iron our shoulder seams so walter you want a, a walking foot see i was contemplating a needle feed i have a single needle which is kind of a, a misleading term. Makes it sound like all other machines have more than one needle. <laughs> all right, so same thing. We're gonna just press that seam one direction because we're doing the French seam. If you are uh, just not doing French seams and you are sewing your shoulders, you're gonna just sew them right sides together once you've already finished those edges or finish them after you've sewn your shoulder seam. And you're gonna press it towards the back. Okay, and then we're gonna do the other way. I'm trying not to let this touch the ground. I'm just not tall enough. <laughs> okay, I need to do this sideways to me. Here we go. Uh, needle feed is the um, needle goes like this toward you. So it's almost like instead of a walking foot, it's a walking needle. Um, it just depends on what you're sewing and what your sewing style is. I'm not an expert on those, so I don't really want to say a whole lot more, but I did try them. Uh, I drove all the way to this place and it was just kind of a, I don't know. It didn't, it didn't install in confidence in me <laughs> dealing with the people. And then they were just like, well, we can't get that machine. I was like, okay, why do you have it here? And you know, it was just one of those experiences. They also were extremely patronizing and treated me like I didn't just assumed things about me and I was done. I was done. I don't tolerate that. <laughs> I have zero tolerance for that kind of thing. This is a rayon crepe that Helen's, Helen's closet sent to us. Pin feed. I don't know what pin feed is. Oh, interesting, Walter. It's not a lot of stress on the needle because the needle is moving. It's the same amount of stress that your needle's going through already. I didn't really line that up very well, did I? This is one tricky thing about French seams that I could certainly get better at is uh, when you're doing that first seam that we just sewed, it's easy to think of lining it up on the seam line 
for that seam, but what you should be lining it up on is the half inch seam line, even though you're sewing it only at an eighth of an inch. Oh, I got a little big there. I'm gonna let it go. Let's see if I can correct that a little bit though with that seam allowance where it's lining up. You definitely want your seam allowances to be pretty accurate here because we're getting into that neckband territory, right? So we're eventually gonna be sewing the neck neckband to the neckline. And you want it to all line up and fit in there. Is it washable? Um, it looks like I would wash it. I washed everything though first, Priscilla. The only thing I haven't washed, I think, is some of the wools that I have. Uh, I did a wool uh, merino knit though. I washed that, but like the spoiled wool, I didn't. Yeah, you need to Google that, yeah. Um, but it, this looked like she pre-washed it in the machine. Rands tend to stay like, you know, like uh, they say dry clean only, but I don't find it completely necessary. It might change your texture a tiny bit, but I'm fine with that if I can just throw it in the washing machine, you know? All right, we're gonna do sleeves, right? Yeah, sleeves, let's do it. All right, so I got sleeves. We've got a lot of robe here. We're gonna do wrong sides together. Same thing, we're gonna do the um, French seam. It's a big armhole, look at this thing. It is a big armhole. <laughs> so this is my uh, back, right? Okay. I've got my robe in my lap. So one thing I always caution people is try not to get your garments pulling on the needle, you know? You gotta try and keep it all on the table if you can. So I'm looking for this one. No, this one right here. Wrong sides together. All right, back and back. Yep, here we go. It's coming together now. It's gonna start looking like a robe. Very exciting. See, see, so like right now, look, I'm lining it up on that eighth inch. I really should be lining this up at the half inch line. And then sewing it at the eighth inch. Because eventually that's where it's gonna land. It feels weird to do it, I promise, but, but it, it works. So you have a few notches along the way. Most importantly, you have this one at the shoulder. So remember, press your seams towards the back. Line up, find your middle notch of your sleeve. Line it up to the seam there. Pin it if you need to, totally fine. Pin or, or clip or whatever you like. This is a lot of robe. <laughs> All right, goes the end. There's no ease, so you don't have to worry about uh, the sleeve not fitting. Remember, it's going to that seam line, right? I was about trying to like make it work, but I don't need to do that. All right, so same thing on the other side. Yeah, I mean, um, I don't know if you saw my Nancy, but I made it in a uh, boiled wool and uh, linen. Um, and yeah, I do. I think the uh, part you're gonna have, I'm just kind of lost to the sauce here. <laughs> here we go. I think uh, doing those little ties, you might wanna get creative on those ties and things and do maybe like a ribbon instead 
or twill tape or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> that would be nice, Nicole. Um, or uh, the other thing is like sewing that waist belt on some of those thick fabrics, you might find it to be a little bit cumbersome depending on what it is. Like the boiled wool's flat enough, but if you were doing a pretty bulky fabric, then you just might need to, or, or maybe you do that bit not in the really thick. Maybe you do like a contrast print or something. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't want that at a half inch seam. Oops. It's, it's confusing me. I need to put it at the half inch seam line, but sew it at eighth inch since I'm doing the French seam. That way I keep the, the seam allowance accurate and my seam lining up at that side seam. There we go. trying to keep it on my table. It's a slicker and snot though. <laughs> he wants to just go boop. Oh, look at my stay stitch did something funny here. I'm going to take that out so that I don't accidentally, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little bit of thread vomit. That's what I like to call that. Like when, um, you're, uh, I don't usually ever see that when it's kind of tight. I'm just going to get rid of it so that it doesn't accidentally poke out my French seam. Maybe it looks, oh yeah, here we go. This will be a lot easier to get rid of on this side. Oh, it probably wouldn't show my French seam since it's not on this side. There we go. Let's get rid of it. There we go. All right, so we're here at the top and that's my back. So I'm gonna press my seam that way. Line up my notch, or am I? Maybe I'm not gonna line up the notch. I just have this like sinking feeling like maybe I was doing the uh, hem of the sleeve and not the cap. <laughs> Why is this so much bigger? You know what? This stay stitch, it's really taut. I'm going to I'm going to pop it in a few places. It's drawing it up too much. I think my tension it caught on something. We saw the other sleeve go in really nicely, so we know it's just this armhole. Something's up with it. Push that seam allowance to the back. See, there's my notch. Ooh, yeah. I'm nervous about that. Let's see. Yeah, that could be nice. Or, you know, even just like a, a lightweight um, poplin, you know? I like that Suki that Helen posted on Instagram today or yesterday with her dog in her lap. Like, I love that kind of print. Be really cute like on a solid too line up this half inch all right so now we're going to uh, trim that seam and did I trim this one? I don't think so, right? All right, we're gonna trim it on the rotary mat, on my ironing board. I think I have a rotary knife over here. Except that it's got stuff on it, it's red. I just put this little mini one under here sometimes when I want a rotary knife here. Let's get that well away from the knife. It's 
So say you uh, are in the middle of your French seams and all of a sudden the dog runs by muddy and you have to like stop sewing. Don't trim your seam. <laughs> trim it later. Because <laughs> I guarantee you, whatever you trim off, it's just going to get thready again by the time you go back and look at it. You know what I mean, jelly beans? Okay, so just trimming this down. I'm making sure I'm not getting any other layers. At least I'm trying to. All right, where's my other one? Here we go. Try and handle it very little. See, this one's laying a little nicer. I think we're uh, two steps away from doing our neckband. So if you want a snack or a bathroom break, <laughs> go for it. All right. Don't iron your offal mat. It doesn't end well, I promise. Not even a little. All right, so stop that. I'm going to now iron that edge one way. We're no, the seam allowance one direction and sometimes this is what I do I just kind of get it ready right so you can see there's one of those spots where my notch was deeper than that seam that I just sewed and that's that's okay it's not ideal I agree but that's not going to cause you problems that little notch right there that's not going to cause you problems later on would you still enter it into the fair you know <laughs> maybe maybe not but um we're not about entering things into the fair here so don't sweat it It's not going to be a raw uh, edge there when we do our next pass. We're going to enclose it. But you still will see that little bit on the outside. Or not on the inside, sorry. I didn't mean to say that. This is a little thicker, so I need to do it from this side. All right, let's do our other one. And then we're going to do the whole side seam. So that's two steps and then we're on to, I'm pretty sure we'll go right to our neck band then. Did I trim this one? Why does it see? That's what I'm talking about. See, like I trimmed that and look, it's already getting thready. So yeah, go wash the dog first and then trim your seam. Just saying. Fabric has a mind of its own. I really love sewing with the, um, What's that noil that we've gotten a bunch of times? Uh, the viscous linen noil. I really love that stuff, but I tell you what, it grows when you're not watching. So you gotta be careful. All right, so we're gonna iron on this side. <laughs> so what do we, are you guys doing the Zoom meeting? Oh, we, you know told all of our closest secrets and no it was fun we just chatted about what we're sewing and yeah a lot of folks were working on projects and if anyone's interested in being in on the the Asoso zoom meeting just send me an email 
I'll put you in the little group. I'll probably have them monthly starting in January. And my email is so so live at gmail.com. Email is great because then I can just add you to the group email on a blind copy and I send you the invite. Um, if you're a Patreon patron, then um, I'm trying to remember to just post if you're interested in there. I'm not going to just put the invite in there, uh, but if you are interested, you just say, yes, I'm interested, and then I'll send it to you in a message. I'm still getting the hang of Zoom, too, so full disclosure. <laughs> Yeah, it was really fun. <laughs> yes. Don't look too close and don't enter in the fair. Yeah. I feel like I said that a lot when I was first trying to, um, like, explain what I did on my live stream. I, I, I am not about perfectionist sewing. I, I have been in that phase, and I love it. It's really awesome. I am not there now. I have much respect for it. It's just not my thing. You're not going to see me make wedding dresses here or formals. There's plenty of people that do that. I don't need to do it all, you know? Uh, I tend now to gravitate toward using production techniques on home sewing projects. I don't think your sewing, home sewing project needs to go like lightning fast, but I do feel like when you can get it done in a pretty efficient way, you're going to be a little more excited and kind of interested as it goes along and um, ready to start your next project, right? So that's kind of my mix. My style is like production techniques on home sewing projects. And I try not to do any like industry techniques. They're just kind of crazy. You know, like we don't have all those machines. We're doing our best, right? All right, here we go. Yeah, there are about 10 of us. Would it be rude to pick my brain as you mean? No. Aren't you a Patreon patron? Of course not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think it's a good place to knit too. <laughs> I should have been knitting, but I, I, I was really bad. I was eating breakfast. <laughs> he didn't miss much. I, my husband went um, out of town on a little solo RV trip. So my morning ended up being a little bit more full of things because it, it wasn't two of us doing everything. It was just one of us. All right, so we're going to do our last pass of this French seam on the sleeve. Remember, we sewed that stay stitch at a three-eighths of an inch, so you know you just need to be to the left of it. Yeah, and something else happened too, right? I was almost late for a reason. I'm almost, almost, always, no matter what, there's always something going on. Today I almost ran out of gas, and then when I walked in the door, there was a bird. And my husband's response when I told him this was, he's like, you do like to live on the edge. I don't, though. <laughs> I don't like to live on the edge. Okay. All right, I'm a little lost in this last. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. I see it. Let's trim these right here now. Those are going to poke out. Even though we trimmed them. Rayon. Just does that. No matter how good you are. Oh, that's good, Nicole. I'm glad. Yeah, just ignore it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you ever have buy one of my patterns and 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 get one of those videos, I say that a lot. I'm not trying to get you to buy one of my patterns at all. I'm just saying like, um, I think people are surprised that. I'm, you know, especially if it's your first time sewing one of those, because my patterns aren't easy. A lot of them, they're kind of heavy duty. And so you, you really got to know, I think knowing what to let go of and what not to let go of is, I, wouldn't you like to know that about everything in life? You know? So why not at least know it about sewing? And some of it's just personal preference. I've definitely known plenty of people that are like, oh no, I can't let that go fine. Don't let it go. 
I could probably do a whole dedicated video on the day I decided to get good at sewing. Like I remember it and how I did that. And it was literally not taking no for an answer from my machine, you know? Like I became the boss of my sewing and I decided I'm the boss of this. This is my project, my machine. I'm the boss here. And I just didn't take no for an answer anymore. I didn't just be like, okay, you know? And I got all of a sudden my sewing just propelled. It got so much better. And then, and I don't even really know specifically what skills I picked up. It was really a mindset for me. That's what worked. So right, Beverly? Exactly. <laughs> you want to come to the interview list? Oh, that's awesome, Nancy. <laughs> that was a good thing for you to teach him how to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. well, I, my, I don't mind pumping gas at all, but the, the funny thing is, you guys, for some reason, <laughs> my husband or daughter want to borrow my truck always about the time that it's like almost to the quarter tank. And they're like, oh, I'll fill it up for you. Can I drive your truck? I'm like, sure. I haven't filled my tank up since March, I realized. And my husband has an electric car. <laughs> so if I take his, I don't even think about it. All right, here's our seam. So now we're going to do the same for our side seam. And now we're getting back to those side seam pockets. Nancy does have life figured out. <laughs> She's living in what's potentially wine country. She's taught people how to pump for gas. She tells her husband what's for dinner. Nice, Nancy. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> All right. So same thing. We're just going to do this quarter inch seam. We are not worried about that pocket coming up. It's no big deal. Okay. So when you get to your underarm seam, now if you're doing a really thick fabric, you may want to push one of these seams one way and the other the other way. Um, this is a nice thin fabric. I am going to stack them up. I might regret this when I do my second pass, but I'm confident. I think it'll be okay. Just try and keep those seams stacked one on top of the other. Now we're getting close to this pocket. There's your loop, right? So let's pull, pull, poke it that way. Pull your pocket out. There's a lot of robe going on over here. All right, where's my other one? Here's my other one. And we're going to press the seams towards the pocket. You could have ironed them that way. It'd be a little easier. I should have done that. So stack these pocket seams one on top of the other. Now, <clears throat> I, I just want to reassure you, this part right here, I think, uh, makes us nervous. It used to make me nervous. I used to always Google this every time. Um, I just haven't done it very much. Don't think of this as a pocket. Just think of it as part of the garment, right? Um, and don't worry about getting these seams perfectly stacked. Like if you end up getting one a little in front of or behind the other one underneath it, it's going to be okay because when we do our last seam, we're going to cover that up. All right. So don't worry about it. Uh, just try and do your seam allowance best you can. Now I see right here how this is kind of folding back on itself. I could probably clip that a little better. Same with this one right here. So just clip this seam allowance to the, um, to just to where it's laying flat. I'm not going to give you a number just so it's relaxed. And let's look down here. I don't think we have that problem down here. Same thing. So if your seam allowance is toward the pocket, this one's towards the pocket, just like that. If it's turning it all a little bit, just let, get it, let it relax. All right. And I know I don't use pins or anything. Feel free to use pins. It's just, I just don't. There's nothing wrong with it at all. I feel, honestly, I feel better without them and that's why I do it. So there's times I use them though. You'll see me use them today. All right, so here we are. I'm gonna bring my camera down. And get nice and close. All right, so you see, like, it looks a little bit like a hot mess right there, right? But that's just partly because the threads of the pocket and the side are there, right? Depending on your fabric, I'm kind of fussing with this a little bit right now. 
It doesn't help that my the robe over here is kind of pulling on it. Sorry, my hands are so ugly right now. Now you're all looking at my hands. I shouldn't have said that. Um, so this is, I could have lined this up a little better. So let's try and get this pocket to line up to this seam right here. You see that seam turning back right here? Don't pull this down. You know, I'm a polar, so that tends to happen. You're going to get these stacked right on top of each other best you can. Now, my seam allowance is obviously narrower than this whole hot mess right here, right? That's okay. We're just going to go straight down into the pocket right here, pivot, and go around the pocket, okay? And then I'll tell you what we're going to do when we get to the underside. That's awesome, Nancy. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> look in the chat. Okay. I and, and to to be really transparent, I didn't sew things with a lot of French seams until I started streaming because I really wanted um having finished seams to be accessible to everyone. I don't think everyone should have to have a serger. Nancy, thank you. You guys are so generous today. Thank you. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys about the um I can't see. I where why can't I see? Oh, it's right here. I forgot to tell you there's a code right there for the pattern. <laughs> so bad. All right, so get this all kind of relaxed. I, I'm pulling, don't pull. Thank you, Nancy. You're so nice. Yay for French Zebes! Now come down. I could probably have done a little better there, but we're not worried about it. I'm just gonna go about an eighth of an inch down. I'm gonna pivot now, right? This is if you're doing French seams, right? You don't have to worry about any of this if you're not doing French seams. All right, so now we're getting to that underside. So I'm gonna, you know, start kind of stacking that up. But really, I just don't wanna pull on this curve because it's all in the bias and it, and it does, it can get a little bit wavy and a little out of control if you start pulling on it. I'm really talking to Sarami here because I'm a polar. All right, so let's get a little bit of this rope sorted out. We need this and we need you. Come over here, be way over there. All right, so let's get this. All right, so we're at the underside. Let's trim this thread, okay? Push the seam that way. Here's the top one. I'm going to move a lot of stuff out of the way over here so I don't slide it. I'm going to pull this down. This is a pretty big project, so it does make it a little trickier. I'm going to try and keep this as relaxed as possible so that this demo looks pretty good. This <laughs> is so much robe. All right. I'm just get this over my shoulder for now. All right. So here we go. We're doing the exact same thing. So we're pretty pleasant placing the seam. I'm making this look fiddlier than it is, but I'm just trying to make it also be really obvious what you're doing there. So put those seams towards the pocket, line them up on top of each other, line up your side seams there. You see that, right? I can kind of feel these are a little bit off from each other. There we go. Now we're going to sew along here. And we're going to pivot right here. We're not, we don't go out here yet because that's the full seam allowance. We're going to enclose all this on our next step. All of this hoo-ha is going to get covered up. It's going to be really nice. All right, so there we are. Now we're going to pivot. Probably got to take the robe off. Ugh. All right, pivot. And now we're just going to go straight down the side seam. You can do this for inseam pockets on anything. You can add them to whatever too. All right, so now we're going all the way down. Let's hope they match. <laughs> now the camera's really zoomed in. little cut a little bit 
funky down here. It looks a little bit like the Wild West. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with that. I'm just going to trim this up a little straighter. Not a big deal though. It just felt really, yeah, really <laughs> uneven there. We're gonna trim this whole seam though um, in a second. All right, so now we're gonna do our other side. So that was your practice one. Now this is your real one. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> They're both real. I don't know why, but I always start from the top and go down when I do these. So um, I may have decided that that is the easier way to do it. I don't remember now. All right, so you can see this doesn't line up perfectly right here. See that? So let's, let's kind of finesse this a little bit here. I think I can get that whole thing in there in, in my seam allowance, so I won't worry about it too much. I didn't even notice if it was going this was going on on the other side, but we'll definitely make sure we include it all in the final seam allowance when we enclose it. All right, so here we go. Let's get this lined up. Try and get it to relax. Same thing. So remember, if your bulk seems really bulky, you can offset those if you need to. And here we get, we're getting to our pocket. Now, if you if you have something really bulky and this loop you think is going to give you trouble with your um, French seam, you can insert it on the next step. You just got to remember to do it. So if you're feeling like uh, turning it this back on itself it's going to give you a problem you could just insert this into the last steps to where this butts up against this seam we're sewing now um, and then um, just reinforce it a little bit because you don't have the the bonus of being well like I, I'm doing French seam so it's getting double sewn and on a regular seam I guess it wouldn't be so it's not a high stress spot but it can be you know all right, so same thing, eighth inch seam. Now here we are again, right? We're not worried about this at all. Come down straight in front of the seam here at that eighth inch. So what I like to do to say is just tune out everything and just look at your raw edge. That's all you're worried about and you're staying an eighth of an inch away from it or whatever your seam allowance is for your first pass of your, your French seam. Just stay parallel to the raw edge. Don't worry about anything else. Pretend like this little raw edge right here isn't even here. Just picture this as one solid shape. You know what I mean? Don't psych yourself out. It's not a big deal. It's just kind of like a lot of moving parts. So it feels a little like, do I need to worry about that? I have, I have figured out you don't have to worry about it. So you can trust me because <laughs> I worried about it too for a while. <laughs> I kind of like that streaming really uh, cemented, no, I don't want to say cemented, but it kind of really got me into French seams because now I just, I really love them. I would probably do things like binding seams and things like that more often if I didn't think people would just never watch because of that. <laughs> because I like to bind and I know not everybody does. All right, so here we are, we're coming around this long robe that's my side seam all right here we go it'll be a little easier to handle now that the side seams are sewn so I just try and keep this curved edge nice and relaxed press your seam allowance toward the pocket just like that stack them on top Remember, you're just looking at the raw edge. So see, I'm gonna clip this right here to get that to lay flat. Do I need to do that over here a little bit? Just like that. There's probably a lot of ways to do this. There's probably even some classier ways to do this, but this works, I promise. But we do like to bind now, that's right. 
that's what I like to see. We know the merits of it. And it's just straight seams, right? Okay, so here we go. Let me get that to lay a little flatter. It's a little like rumpled from being folded back. All right, now we pivot and we come straight down the side seam. Now I have noticed that sometimes uh, my seam allowance will a little bit get bigger there and smaller there. Really, it's not a big deal because it's the underside of your pocket. If you're not doing anything kind of crazy into your garment, don't worry about it, all right? Yeah, binding. <laughs> nice. You guys are champs. Yeah, this fabric is slippery. <clears throat> I just did a free pattern for Patreon patrons on the Notions wedgie. Um, and I gave a non-binding option because I'm still like, I promise you don't have to bind all the time. But it's so handy. I love it. It's kind of like sewing is my solution for all home repairs and binding is my solution for all finishing. <laughs> all right, there we go. We're not done yet. Make sure my pocket opening is the same on either side. All right, so now we're going to trim this long edge and we're going to do our next seam. Yeah, knit binding makes me nervous too. <laughs> But there's great attachments for um, doing stuff like that. I kind of want to go to my, let's look and see what my pattern table looks like. Is it bad? Oh yeah, it's really bad, huh? Okay. The, that is the camera that pops out of the, the um, socket. <laughs> and there's nothing I can do about it. It's kind of a weird one. Camera's fine. But the USB ports are not so much. All right, so let's trim this up. And then the next step will be the neck band. All right, so let's get this, make sure it's out of the way there. This is, I, I tried to do an eighth of an inch seam. I did a little bit more. Don't tell Helen, okay? But it is why I chose to do an eighth of an inch because this part right here, this cutting step, it's kind of good to be able to cut a lot off if it's a very fraying fabric like this one. It's why I didn't do my first pass a quarter inch plus, not to mention, let's be realistic, a half inch seam allowance total for a French seam. You don't want to do a quarter and a quarter. You kind of want to give yourself a little wiggle room. All right, so. Let me get my scissors. So right here, remember when we pivoted down here at the bottom of the corner? There it is, you're gonna clip to that. Don't be nervous, clip right up to it. My uh, scissors are so sharp, I have to be really careful. They don't like thicknesses, so I have to use the, the base and they are so flippin' sharp, I gotta be really careful. All right, so I'm just trim this up still. Keep that separate. Go around. Let me get that a little smaller so I don't have to worry about it. Oh, interesting, Beverly. Oh, yeah, binding, netting. That's a good idea. Oh, I wanted to uh, talk to you guys. Oh, see, now look, this is something I'm kind of famous for. I didn't get enough seam allowance right there, so I'm going to have to go back and fix that. Um, somebody um, offered a buttonhole attachment for 30 bucks. Look at that. I didn't really get it. So make sure you line up your seams. My fabric is obviously a little slippery, so I'm going to have to go back. So there's my pivot point there, and there's my seam. So I'm just going to trim really close, and then we'll fix that. No problem. So if anyone's interested, let me know and I can put you in contact with her. She says she's just never going to use it and you can talk to her and see if it would work for you. It won't work for me. But it looks really cool. It looks vintage, um, but totally intact. And 
It did uh, lots of different styles of buttonholes, including, I don't believe this, but it does a bound buttonhole. And I'm like, what? I kind of want to see that. It was a Singer attachment. I don't know if it works on any machine. But you can get in touch with her on Instagram, she said, and she can talk to you about it. It's 30 bucks. It looks great. And that's just to cover, like, shipping and getting it to somebody. <laughs> oh, sew together bags. Wait, that sounds really familiar. Is there binding in that? I'm going to trim this down a little bit smaller. It's already fraying. See this fabric's like, she's not looking. Look, relax. You know, that's what those guys are doing here. All right, so let's do the other one. Uh, right here. There it is. Okay. And then we're going to iron it, right? Okay. This is one of those uh, projects where it probably doesn't feel like you're getting much done and then it's just complete. Because <laughs> after this, we put the neck band on and all we have left really is like tacking, attaching the uh, belt and um, hemming it. So we're almost done. It doesn't look like it, but we are. So remember, you're going to cut up into that pivot point. And um, you're going to do it on the top, too. I just forgot to do it on the other side. We can just do it at the sewing machine, too. So let's get this away so I can trim this. I'm right-handed, so I really want to go like this. There we go. It's funny. When I recorded my video on doing this, I did the same thing where I didn't catch the pocket. And I had to re-record the whole thing. It kind of ticked me off. But it's something I, I definitely do, and I know I do, and I should have known to look to be make sure I got it. Look, at, I barely caught it there, too. It's just a slippery fabric, you know? So it's funny, these scissors are super, super sharp. I cannot stress that enough. I've cut through a pin and they still work. <laughs> Not this pair, but another pair. And, um, uh, but they don't like thicknesses. So I know it doesn't seem, it seems kind of contrary to being sharp and not liking, like, oh, if it's sharp, it should just go through it. But it's because, I'll show you in a second, why you can't do thicknesses. It's kind of a subtle thing. It took me, a, so the, the handles are squishy. So if you want to push down really hard on something, you don't get any traction because it's soft. You don't get any leverage, in other words. All right, so now we're going to iron. Put my scissors over here so I don't forget. Oh, that was for you, Noemi. Yes. I wasn't sure if you wanted me to know your, to say your name. Yeah, for vertical needle zigzag sewing machines. Yes. Good night, Malin. Sleep well, friend. Yeah, right, Terry? I totally agree. All right. I know, it is like you're double sewing it, but gosh, I swear, my garments last so much longer when they're French seams. I hate, I hate making it sound like this is the best way to do it. It's just my current favorite, you know? And I, I'm actually trying to think like, because we're going to do the exposed seam method finish on the neck band, I am trying to think like, all right, it means that we have to finish that edge somehow. And I don't have a zigzag here. Well, I have a zigzag over there, but um, it's not hooked up. All right, so it's really hard to iron this but you can do your best you know you're gonna have to like 
open this up. And sometimes I'll put the, the salami in there, you know, like this, and just iron it the best I can just to give myself a little bit of a help when I go to do the next step. But, you know, it's your pocket. Don't sweat it too much. Just do your best. So I have an idea that I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, as long as it's not too hard, I'm gonna try. I'm just not sure I can manage it with the half inch seam allowance. And then that way we can still finish it. So we're gonna try that, but we're still gonna sew it on the way you would for that method. So don't worry, same steps. All right, so the salami in here, this underarm as well. Okay, I got that one. And let's do the other side while we're here. Yeah, I think so, Sydney. I like doing that actually. I think that's a, a good way to go sometimes. Um, I know it's not a popular thought, but I'll bet there's plenty of articles in Threads Magazine, which is a, a sewing source that I find to have really great information. And it's been around a really long time. And they get some really great um, professionals all about those articles saying the same thing. The thing is the serger is not a, you know, very old invention, you know, so zigzag pinking shears, um, top stitching it down in the seam allowance. Okay, so there's my tie right there. I can feel that little bump. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna trim down the tie a little bit more. Uh, where is it? There it is. Oh, that's awesome. You made the Fairfield. Oh, I'm glad that one. I get a lot of comments on the Fairfield. My husband loves that shirt too. She had a baby this year. <laughs> I would be busy. All right, so it's gonna feel a little funky up here. I actually do need to have these clipped when I go do the ironing. So make sure you have your uh, corner that you clipped into clipped, right? Right there at that pivot point. Let's get rid of some of these threads here. They look like they might give me a little trouble. And this is going to feel funky and look a little funky. I, I know. Just iron it on that seam line best you can. Try and do a good job. And then once you start ironing it and pulling the seam out, you're going to see, look, you have your whole seam here. It's a 90 degree angle. And then we're going to come down and close this and go around and it's all done really easy because we're only paying attention to the edge right that's what we're thinking about we're not thinking about all those seams and the fact that this won't turn out we're just thinking about the edge i'm just going to stay parallel to the edge so just kind of keep your game face on don't psych yourself out especially on stuff like this just try and break it down to the like logical you know thing that makes sense to kind of calm your nerves. <laughs> Maybe most of you are like, it's no big deal. Why are you talking like it's a big deal? Good. I hope that's how you feel actually. Cause I used to think it was. All right. So same thing on this bottom, right? Your side seam. You really can't skip the ironing step on the, on a side seam pocket. So look, it feels like it might not be okay. Let's make sure I clipped it. I did. Just gonna make sure all the way into that corner. Just trim it down a little bit. 
And then once you start like arranging it, pulling it apart and kind of holding it taut, it's totally fine. Look at that. Some of your thicknesses might kind of weigh in and say, no, I want to lay here, lady. I don't want to go the other side. If you want to fight it, fight it, but don't worry about it. Yeah, exactly. The goal is to prevent the stitching. Um, I think with zigzagging, it may help a little bit more, but I don't, not sure. It'd be kind of fun to do a test. You, it'd be really easy to do a test too. Like if you're ever doing like um, pre-washing your fabric, you could just do like a little seam at the end and make sure you do both of them on the same grain line, your little seam, your trial seam. And then um, zigzag one and straight stitch one twice and just see what you think. All right, where's my... Where is it? The camouflage. Oh, this is the neck. All right, here we go. Um, I'm lost. Here it is. Here it is. Okay. One more. Hang in there, guys. We've already trimmed this, right? Yeah. Wait, did we trim this? Yeah, we trimmed this. Doesn't look like it, does it? <laughs> that therapist advice. <laughs> Teflon fingers. Ooh. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, that's from working on a farm, why I can handle the heat. I worked on a farm, and um, the water came out of the faucets at 180 degrees to sterilize things. I don't recommend that. And, um... It really desensitized my hands. That's why. It's kind of not great, but. Like I'll be washing dishes and my husband or daughter will come and just want to put their hands really quick under the water to wash them and they regret it. They feel so bad. I'm like, no. <laughs> All right, just a little bit on these pockets. Make it try my best. It's so awkward, right? I could use one of these at home. I should just make one, huh? Wait. Oh, there we go. I was a little lost again. I think that when it comes to sewing, it's really easy to get upset if things aren't going well. I've definitely rage quit and cried plenty. But there just comes a point where you're like, all right, like I say, I'm the boss of this. I'm not going to let it see me cry. <laughs> it's okay if you need to. <laughs> and um, at the end of the day, it's sewing, right? And you probably need a snack or a nap. And you probably shouldn't have signed up to sew your daughter's school all the play costumes, right? So we learn. We just learn. Next time we won't do that. You've got to be nice to yourself. And then you go follow the that Instagram account, uh, Can You Sew This For Me, and you'll feel better. <laughs> all right, here we go. Get into the fun stuff. Oh, so what you used wool scraps to stuff your salami in your hand? That's interesting. Do you have any tips? I this feels like um, sawdust. Hear it? It doesn't feel like sawdust. It's not pokey. It sounds like um, sand is in there or something. 
All right, so one of these, remember, I forgot to clip. So let me look. Is this it? I, I was just in there. Why didn't I clip it? This one's clipped. Okay, I clipped both. All right, good. We go. We must have been the other side. Let me get this a little better. Yeah, those things aren't cheap. It's sawdust, okay. <laughs> you used witch hanging. <laughs> oh man, Nancy, you're, you're a gem. I love it. You know, we just got a new one of those um, ninjas. Cause I, it, I don't know if it's a ninja. Don't, don't quote me on that. But like for making smoothies. Cricket and Michael make smoothies a lot. That was one of the best things I did was buy them one of those a long time ago because I was so tired of hearing them use the blender, that sound. Especially uh, one of them, I don't remember which one, was really impatient. And oh gosh, just couldn't stand the sound. So I actually bought them one of those and I loved it. And they, they one, it just broke, broke so they bought a new one. And it was kind of a funny thing that broke on it. So, um, but we still have the blade. So maybe I could <laughs> use that, the old blade, <laughs> so that they're not like, don't put that in our smoothie maker. I mean, it's natural, <laughs> right? Use wool for one side and cotton for the other. You're good at doing that too, Nancy, right? After the bootstrap. Okay, I have to actually re-sew one of these, remember? It's really not apparent though. I'm really surprised. I thought one of these seams was actually just missing. Wonder if I can get away. I can't, well, I could probably get away with it. So this might be it right here, see that? All right, this is the underarm right here. Yeah, there we go. There's a little bit of my raw edge, so it did poke out there. There's probably not a whole lot you can do that with that unless you shaped the seam allowance, so that didn't happen. Oh, there it is, there's my little boo-boo right there. All right, now we know. I knew there was one that I really fell short on. All right, so remember you've clipped that corner there. Now this isn't gonna show on the outside. So even if you can't really get this to lay nice and flat, I mean, mine is no picture perfect thing. But look at that, that is pretty much the seam right there. It's about as flat as you can get. You could really monkey around with this and do lots of really good things to make this a better seam. We're going pretty quick today, but um, just remember that even if there is a little weirdness right there, this is on the inside of your garment. You're about to sew a seam allowance right there and it's just not gonna show. This is on the inside of the garment. And if it's your first time doing like an inseam pocket, um, you're gonna be nice to yourself, right? This isn't your job, so you know, you gotta be nice to yourself. And if it is your job, my hat's off to you. Being a production sewist isn't an easy job, but this isn't how you would do production sewing either. So not on something like this. All right. So even though I have that little raw bit, because my seam allowance is like right here, we're gonna enclose that. It's only gonna show on the inside. Okay, so we need to fix this, right? And then we're good. I may have, did I need another one on the other one too? I can't remember. Is there not cute handmade versions of them? I totally agree with you. That would be so fun. Okay, so my camera's really low right now. I'm gonna bring it up for now. If you guys want me to put it back down, we can. I just don't like it in front of my face. Oh, cool, Mrs. Necro. What's her name, Penguin and Pear? <laughs> right, Nicole? I know. All right, Nancy. 
He wants to ride any gas. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you had to feed your dogs. Usually your dogs right now are like, dude, I need to eat. All right, where's that uh, pocket? Is it this one here? I don't think so. Oh, it is, it is. Okay. All right, so let's pull it. So I talked a good game not using pins. And I think I was saying it right here on this particular pocket. Pins would have helped. I wouldn't have lost that little spot. All right, so let's do it from this side this time so that I don't miss it. Let's blend it in. We'll just trim off that edge there. So paranoid, I'm gonna cut the robe underneath. My hands are still shaky from being on that, uh, <laughs> that medicine for the agave incident. So annoying. All right. Looking at these threads already trying to sneak out. What is this? Little thread here. I don't I don't like trimming these once they're poking out of my French seam because I get a little like, oh, is that gonna like pull the um is it a thread that's gonna pull from the fabric and then you have that line across your fabric? We've all done that, right? I don't like it either. All right, so let's sew this so it doesn't unravel anymore. All right, so we're just doing our next seam, just that remaining seam allowance that you have. Let's try and line this up, this edge here. I'll bring the camera down when I get close to those fiddly bits. Let's get that right. So when I have this like this, I'll just pull it down already. You see how my fold right here is like sneaking out Let's try and correct it a little bit. So if I can't and it's trouble, I pull on that layer on the underside like that. See, that just kind of gets rid of it. So now I'm getting to this seam here. I'm gonna do my best to match them. We'll see. Or you could have, you know, canted them. All right, now we're at that loop. And this is a little trickier because it's pretty thick right there. I'm going to go for straight <laughs> rather than um, the that seam being perfect. All right, so now here we are. We're at this pocket. Can we see okay? How's that? Yeah, right, Sydney? Oh, she's a UK says. So ooh. That's probably why I haven't seen her because she probably is live when I'm asleep or something. Um, all right, so here we are. We're at the pocket. Same thing. We're just pretending like that edge is the edge and we're not worried about any of this stuff except for the fact that we kind of want to stack these seams. Again, if you don't stack these perfectly, don't worry about it quite yet. We're going to do one last thing to kind of hide that. Just don't get it too far off, right? So as you try and get these seams stacked, I can kind of feel my seam allowances in there. My machine, I have a lot of pressure on my presser foot. Um, it will push my seams a little bit off of each other occasionally, no matter how good I am. I like the pressure over the matching sometimes. All right, so here we are. We're gonna come down along the left side of where we sewed the pocket seam together. Right, here's this seam right here. Sorry, it's not in a contrast thread. It'd be a lot easier to see. So. This is the edge we're really concerned with as far as like where we're measuring our seam allowance from. So you're just gonna stay your seam allowance away from that edge. I'm gonna do about three eighths of an inch. If you get a little more or less, don't sweat it, okay? But you're gonna come down here and pivot on the other side of this line though, right? So don't, if your seam allowance is on this side, definitely stay on this side because we're gonna have to uh, clean up our pocket opening anyway by um, stitching on that side. All right, so I think that's about three-eighths of an away, away from the top edge there. We're going to pivot now. This one's not ironed very well because it's the part I fixed. 
Now I'm kind of holding all this taut and those straight down so that they're trying to stay fairly lined up. Hard to tell. You could pin it and make sure. Good idea. <laughs> all right, and now, so around your edge here, try not to get it wavy. Maybe that only happens to me. Oh, this is a little hole right here in this pocket here. You're all my witness. I'm going to let that slide since we're so far into this right now. It's going to still be a clean seam on the outside. I'm really doing that just because I want to encourage you to not sweat certain things. But, you know, would I, do I really feel comfortable giving Helen this back with that little flaw in there? Not really. I might fix it <laughs> off camera or something. But we're kind of in the groove here, right? All right, so same thing. Here we are at this underside. So you're going to stack your seams. Now, one of the things I meant to mention earlier that you want to watch out for is that your this right here, this distance is flat on one on top of the other. And what I mean by that is that one isn't longer than the other because maybe you sewed this on and one was like a quarter of an inch longer and now you have this like slack. Try to try try to make sure you just pay attention to that. All right now, so get your seams stacked one on top of each other. And just the same thing. Try not to pull. See how I was pulling and it was already distorting it? Keep this nice and relaxed. I'm going to get to this spot here. Got my seams one on top of the other. And remember, you have the seam up here. And you, oh, I have my, oh, look, my seam got flipped. Well, poop. How'd my seam get flipped? Bye, Kevin. Well, that's not okay with me. How did I not notice that? So my seam allowance, see it should be going towards the pocket. If they were both going this way, that'd be okay, but uh, they're not and that wouldn't work up here. <laughs> you need them to go the other way. Gosh darn it. Gosh darn it. I'll try and take, I'll try and fix this as quick as possible. There we go. We'll just take out a little bit. And then we're going to take out just this little spot that I would, I really hate to seam rip right here. <laughs> Oh yeah, do the thread, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, I think when I first started encountering that, um, Sydney, I didn't have a lot of money to spend on buying all that thread and I would just wait for those sales. Then I got really lucky that a factory that I used to do pattern drafting for went um, out of business. They sold actually, and so they were moving. And I went and bought all their thread. Not all of it, some of it was nylon, but um, it worked. All right, so let's just get, I hate that this is where I have to take this out because it's where we've clipped. Always dicey, right? All right, so press that seam toward the pocket this time. I don't think I could blame this on you guys. So I was like acting like I knew what I was doing. I know. You got to do exclamation point drink. Oh, it's because of Rebecca. <laughs> got all the others okay. It's so funny. We were so specific. So specific. All right, I need a little bit more space here. We're, we're, we're almost back on track. Probably doesn't look like it to you guys, but we really are. All right, we got that. Nice and flat. Get my seam allowance. 
balance there. Try and get that nice and lined up if I can. I'm going to probably uh, reclip this just so I can make sure that I am well away from that. It's the underside of my pocket. Thankfully, it's like a loose flowy robe, right? Oh yeah, see I barely caught it there. So we'll just clean that up now and no one will ever know because I know you guys won't say anything. All right, so let's clip into this corner. Please don't let me clip too far. These scissors are just, just so sharp. Look at all these threads already popping up. Gosh darn it. The drama. All right, I think we're good. Yeah, I've worn it from way back a couple times. I, it was a good transition from, cause I used to always buy things from like, um, like a vendor and I, I can't really do that now. I was glad you guys told me about that place. All right, here we go. We're back on track. All right. Got our seams stacked one on top of the other pointing the correct way. It's laying, oh yeah, it's laying okay. It's not laying that great this time. I'm gonna have to go a little further in and down. There we go. Oh, I didn't have my camera down, did I? You'll see the other one, it'll be nicer. Oh, that's cool, Beverly. I was looking at something on there recently because someone mentioned it, but I, uh, I can't remember what it is. I didn't end up buying it. I talk myself out of buying things all the time. All right. Not bad, not bad. I should have fixed that while I was in there, huh? <laughs> okay, other side. Yeah, that one's correct. <laughs> all right, same thing. Line up your side seam. Let me lower the camera in a second too. So you can see those junctures. All right, so we have that seam there on the underarm. The sleeve is. And this is the one I think that the uh, rod is showing a little bit. Now this is where the tie is, so it's gonna give me a little bit of grief trying to get that all into the French seam. All right, so now here we are, the money, money shot, right? We have our whole side seam here, pocket, get your robe, as flat as possible underneath there. Just try and pull this apart. Stack your seam allowances. Stitch right on the left of your seam here. Come down to your seam allowance past the top edge of your pocket. Mine's 3 8 so I'm pivoting there. And then go around. I'm going to do one more thing after this step to actually make your pockets pockets. Because right now the pocket opening is really huge. I mean, it's not really huge. It's just that it's the full um, length of that seam that we sewed to the robe on the first step. And you don't need a pocket opening that big. And if your pocket opening stays really big, things can fall out of your pockets, right? Because you only have this much of a drop from your pocket opening then. 
So you need to, uh, we're gonna need to do one last thing and that's kind of what makes the whole thing come together and cover up any of your boo-boos. Not that you have any. Oh, why don't we get the catalog? All right, same thing, stack your seams. You can kind of feel it and I'm still kind of trying to get it. I, I'm like spreading it apart with my fingers. My hands are really strong uh, from sewing, honestly. So um, they do do a lot. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna come around and we're gonna go just past the seam and down. But we're gonna go just past it to where, about where we think the seam allowance is here. Don't worry about too much because our next step is going to smooth all that out. Even if like right now my underseam is on the other side, we're, we're gonna smooth it out. One of the uh, things that is kind of a fallback as well, like kind of smooths it out for us is the fact that the pocket opening is a straight seam, it does tend to kind of disappear into the side. So let's see how they look. All right, so there's our pocket opening right now. Right, let's see, it's all, there we go. So right now, it's a huge pocket opening. It could stand to be pressed too. So now we're going to make the pocket opening the, see this one looks a little longer up here. I'm trying to ease that in. So you just want it to be about the width of your hand. And there were, there were other um, dots on the pattern. I think they're about like right here. They're kind of gone now. So we can't really see them. So I like to bias the opening towards the top of the pocket so that you have more drop below the opening. My hands look terrible. So we're just going to stitch from the top here. I'm just gonna go a little bit down, just a little bit, like an inch. That's about it, like that right there. On the left of that seam, that's the top of our pocket. And now I'm gonna decide, and it's nice to put your hand in the pocket too, just to kind of decide for sure. I'm gonna start it right here. So now about right here, most pocket openings are about five and a half inches. That's kind of an industry standard. So this is your opportunity if you need something a little larger or smaller to kind of adjust it to fit you. Especially um, on men's things, you know. Five and a half would be too small for most men. All right, so I'm getting my seams stacked on there best I can. I'm kind of easing in that little bit that I got off. It goes right around this line right here. Now you can actually go a little far to the, seam, to the left of the seam if you have to. And you're going to blend in with this one down here. My presser or my uh, feed dogs got hung up on the underside. Trim your threads. Now let's do the other side. All right, so same thing. I'm just going to do a little bit right here. I know this isn't in the instructions. I just kind of know this amount right here. And it is kind of the common sense thing as far as your hand, the opening. You, don't, you can do whatever you want. There's nothing that uh, says it has to be a certain amount. So I just do like three quarters of an inch or an inch just to get it away from this whole juncture here, right? And then um, I'll put my hand in there. So you, you can also just measure the other one you did and do the same amount. That would be really smart. <laughs> stays but when you dream that <laughs> oh yeah right Nicole I know I've seen that too it's kind of crazy that it does that I wish it didn't do that but yeah it'll look like the needle's going like this when it's going really fast yeah all right so about right here and so look at that this was my funky one remember I had to kind of clean up so now I'm gonna start from about right here. I'm just gonna try and blend this in and no one's ever gonna know. So it is a little far from that opening. Let's see how this looks. 
So once it's pressed, it should just kind of disappear into the side seam there. And you have your eye openings a little small, but you have your French seam pocket. Beautiful. But I know what you really want is the neckband. <laughs> Take a drink. <laughs> what do you need, Mrs. Necro? <laughs> oh, because it's fast? The frame rate thing? All right, so here we go. Should we take a look at our Suki so far? Kind of glad I made me one because it's, I have to send this back. All right, I'll hold it up for you guys. Looking good though. It's long. All right, so let's see here. Let me make sure, so use attached tie. Sleeve bands. Oh, I didn't do my sleeve bands yet. So I did that a little out of uh, order. Um, so we'll do those sleeve bands next. The catalog. That's what I figured you meant. <laughs> the way whack catalog. <laughs> All right. So do the sleeve bands. I'm going to do the sleeve bands differently than they, they do. I think my way is easier. Here are the sleeve bands. Making sure. I'm gonna sew them right sides together and I'm gonna switch my thread now. I think we'll be able to stay on the blue for a while. <laughs> and maybe invitation only what no I know I've gotten one of their catalogs before but I haven't gotten one lately I always forget to check my mail So we're going to sew our sleeve bands in a continuous circle. So show you, sew your short ends together, half inch seam allowance. We're going to clean finish these, uh, but you can, I was actually wondering, like, because she wants the exposed seam method for the neck band. I was supposed to do on the sleeve. I think the neckband is really the key. So I'm going to do the clean finish method because I like my method a lot. This little edge doesn't cut straight. But you can just sew these. You fold these uh, wrong sides together, press your seam open, fold it wrong sides together, and then sew this right sides together to your sleeve all the way around and finish the edge and you're done and then press the seam towards the sleeve and top stitch. But I'm gonna clean finish this. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check and make sure that the circumference is actually gonna fit. Because things happen, you know? Things happen, uh, maybe your seam allowance has got a little off. Your fabrics, if they're different like this, they may be reacting differently, they may have relaxed. Um, yeah, just do that now. So we're pretty good there. And we're going to start from the inside of the robe. Press the seam open here. I really cut it close. There's the selvage. <laughs> and you're going to start from the inside of the sleeve. You're going to put the right side of the sleeve band to the inside of the sleeve. I just lost my sleeve. Where'd it go? I'm going to start at the underarm, find the back, press your seam allowance towards the back. I'm going to open up my, my sleeve band. I don't have a free arm on my machine, so I sew this from the inside of the um, circumference of this 
I'll show you what I mean in just a second. I know that sounds kind of confusing. But these like circles like this. <laughs> like this I sew from the inside of this whole thing because I don't have a free arm and a free arm is like um would enable me to put this around the bed of the machine it's one of the drawbacks of having an industrial let's press your seam allowance towards the back and I'm sewing this right side to wrong side I think Waywack was where I found my, my uh, pattern drafting supplies because I used to buy those from someone in the garment industry, but I can only buy a gross at a time. I just really didn't want to get 144 pattern hooks. I wanted, you know, like 50. <laughs> and so Waywack had those. So that was kind of cool. All right, so there's a notch at the halfway point. You want to line that up. Try and sew this uh, seam allowance uh, accurately because it will help the next step. But the fact that the sleeve band is folded in half really helps if you are inaccurate. Because if it were two pieces and there was a seam, you'd have to be more accurate. All right, repeat for the other side. <laughs> I just put it inside my sleeve and I think this should be the front yeah so this seam should go that towards the back A lot of times I do that. I get it under my machine and then I will arrange it because the machine's kind of like a tether. It's like a helping hand. You can, I don't know if you can tell, but the ram's definitely acting different than the twill. The twill's definitely more stable. Kind of like steps like this they're really satisfying because they're not as hard as they used to be using this method this is also how i put on collars and waistbands i start always from the inside sleeve cuffs you name it always from the wrong side that's how i'm going to do the neck band too all right so now we're going to iron it there it is. <laughs> so now we're just gonna press this seam towards the sleeve band. Cause we're gonna enclose the raw edges into the sleeve band. This is when you want a free arm, right? You want an ironing board to do these kinds of steps because they're a little tricky. Especially since the twill is a little stronger than the crepe, it's pushing towards the body of the rope, but that's gonna be okay. It's not that strong or heavy or anything. It's actually really gonna be great because you didn't. I didn't have to interface this. It's all twisted. I just kind of get it going from the wrong, the right side or wrong side. It's kind of hard to call one or the other, right? Because 
We're on the inside of the garment now, but we were on the raw edges on the other side. This side though is a little more, uh, works better. It's untwisted a little bit. Oh, I kind of wish I was using my ironing board right now, but I rarely use it. Only on the really big things. All right, let's do the other one. Get it going a little bit from this side. Especially at that seam allowance there, it's definitely going to push, try and push toward the suki because it's um, thicker there. All right, so let's now, maybe I'll try turning it inside out. I don't think that's going to be easier. This is when you want a ham, you know, <laughs> to iron on, not to eat. Well, that's cool. They have a thread chart. That's nice. I'm really struggling to iron this. Push him back. That does, that's just not working. Let's just do it like this. Press the seam allowances toward the neck, the sleeve band, just like that. My iron ran out of water. There we go. I know it seems like I'm being really fussy about this, but it really sets up that last step really nicely. All right, and so now we're gonna fold this. I need pins. Uh, where's my pins? Time to lose the headband. All right. So I would start uh, at this part. Too. So now I'm gonna fold it onto the right side and finish it. So if you like, you can iron up this edge first, your half inch seam allowance. And see, this is why it's nice that this pattern piece is one piece and we're gonna fold it because if there had been a seam down that long middle, we'd have to be far more accurate with our seam allowances and turning back this edge. You could, even, you could have even folded this up before we sewed it onto the robe. Would have been a little less fussy, you know. You know what I want? <laughs> I was at the fabric store recently and I had to buy zippers and I was a little nervous because I was like, oh, they probably don't even have very many zippers, but they actually did. And then at the last second, I noticed they had this like little carousel, like tabletop carousel of zippers. And I was like, can I just buy that whole thing? <laughs> I just wanted the whole thing. I wanted all of it. <laughs> it was a little excessive, I know. I can tell I didn't get my fold quite the same right here, so let's fix that. Now 
now that I've ironed it, it's like, no. There we go. I need more water in my iron. All right, so let's back here. And now you're just gonna pin this. So what I like to do is I do the underarm on that seam there. And so if you didn't get this seam perfectly on that underarm seam, I know this might kill you, but I really think you should pin this seam right on top of the seam of the neck, the sleeve band, wherever it is. So if it was like an eighth of an inch past the seam that way, that's where I would line it up. And that's so that you don't get torquing. That's really the big danger with, with doing these kinds of bands is the torquing, right? All right, so then let's find our notch over here. There's our notch, same thing. We're going to line up that notch right on top. So now we have these two points that are our non-negotiable points. That's what I like to call these kinds of things. It's non-negotiable. And now everything else in between has to go there, right? And so I'm just gonna kind of pin this, kind of look at it a little bit and see where am I at. My ironing could be so much better. It would make it a little easier. I'm gonna cut that. Pin perpendicular to your fold. Cause we're gonna be sewing it like this. And so that means that this pin will be right here to be able to pull out rather than over here, unless you're left-handed then you put it on the other way. Can you tell I live with a lefty? Not that it ever comes up. And strangely, I eat now with my left hand. If you know, you know. I think the chart I love that I have is that spoon flower one that you sometimes see in background photos. Now I am no fabric designer, but that thing has come in handy when I have done things on there. When I'm like, all right, I know I want the color to be this one on this chart and I'm doing something really quick in like a program and I just picked a color based on what I thought I wanted and then I look at the chart and I'm like, oh, I'm glad I didn't pick that, you know, because I'll look at the number on the chart to see how far I was off. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's not the color I would have wanted. It's really great. All right. So you can see, like, by pinning it at the, those two halfway points, all you have to do then is get the stretches in between them to line up. And it's pretty easy, right? So now I have these pinned. I'm going to iron it now again, just like that. Let's get that in there. There's some steam, just like that. All right. And so this is pretty much ready to sew and it's going to be easy peasy because we're going to do it from the right side and we're not, now we don't have to worry about catching the seam on the other side. All right. So let's iron this first. Right. Let's iron it up a half inch. I'm gonna do a, try and do a little better job this time. Although I'm already failing there. Ironing board would make this easier. Ironing board's like a free arm. There we go. This stuff is very uh it's it's very compliant. But you can tell, like, it's it's pretty boingy, you know? Like, it's got a lot of body and bounce to it. And so you can see that it does kind of fight me. Oh, I wish I would have seen what the subtitle said for boingy. Oh, maybe now I can see. I can't watch that at the same time, though. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, I see the, the thread weights are um, so interesting because you guys have asked me what weight I use. And I honestly just thought like what I used was like uh, the numbers system I was using was standard. <laughs> and it probably is for certain things. But then when I went and looked for top stitching thread for my uh, pants and jeans, and I kind of went over into that like fancy thread area of the store, I was like, oh, hello, what is all this? And I noticed that the smaller the number, the heavier it got, as opposed to the stuff I use, like in my machine, I use Tex 40 in my industrial. And usually what you buy from the store is Tex 27. Like my serger thread that I, I have to buy from the store is always 27. Some of it's 40, but it's, most of it's 20. Like if I want to buy new stuff, I, can, I can't find 40 unless I buy it from a vendor. And I can't make their minimum for colors. That was the only thing I ever had trouble making the minimum for, ironically, was thread. 2,000 yards of zipper, no problem. 2,000 yards of vinyl, no problem. 2,000 yards of stiffener, no problem. 40 rolls of, uh, 40 spools of thread, no thanks. <laughs> I needed eight or 10. <laughs> yeah, 79, like if it's a text, yeah, that's gonna be pretty, because I'm using 40 and it's a little heavier than what most folks use. Yeah, it's great, you guys are learning like what those systems are. And you can kind of share that information with each other. A little slack right there. So let's see, where'd I go wrong here? Maybe I can make this one a little bit less. And this one, let's put the difference here. Now you might find yourself kind of pulling to make this work. A little bit's going to be okay, especially if you're dealing with two different kinds of fabrics. That might not be anything except for the fact that you have two different fabrics going on. I noticed that was pretty significant on the um, other Suki I made, and it's because, you know, I had the boiled wool lining, the linen outer, and then the, um, I don't really know what those cuffs are, but they're definitely kind of an open weave fabric. Kind of linen. Oh, that's cool, Lisa. I don't think I've been, I think once I was at the sale right website, but that wasn't what I was looking for. I was looking for a binding attachment, which ended up being super easy to find in the end. And it cost me $35. <laughs> that's standard. <laughs> My factory was like, oh yeah, those are $235. And we have to have it made in Thailand and it'll take seven weeks. I was like, no. <laughs> Let me order you one. Okay. So like I said, uh, I'm, I don't have the free arms. I'm gonna go on the inside and I do find this to be a little easier. So here we are. So this is the inside of our sleeve, right? Now the reason I do it this way is because, you know, when you're um, usually doing this, you start from the outside and finish on the inside, but then you're worried you're not gonna catch that fold on the inside. I hated that. <laughs> so I started this and it, and it just, it works really great. I admit sometimes you may not want to use this. I kind of encountered that somewhere recently. It was on something we were sewing together. And I kind of had to do it the, the other way. It worked out. But this way, you just need to make sure that your fold is just past that stitch line. It's kind of like how I teach how to bind. Let's get rid of this little back stitch thread there. And so now, I know I'm going to hold this kind of firmly. I'm kind of pulling it a little bit. So I make sure that nothing's torquing because that's something you don't really want to happen. 
but everything looks really good. I'm just gonna sew along this fold, make sure that fold goes just past that stitch line. We don't care as much what it looks like on the inside as we do what it looks like on the outside. And my experience, uh, like 90% of the time, maybe a little less, I will hit both sides no problem by doing this. I think I need to fold this a little bit more. That's why it's kind of bubbling a little bit. You can see that I'm getting this little bubble. I don't want to, I don't want to like just automatically let it go just in case it starts torquing. But there you go. That looks pretty good actually. So another way to prevent torquing is pulling it from both sides. It evenly distributes the fabric. You can sew right over your pins if you want. Um, I'm not because a wary pin was a little awkward. So here we go. Almost to the beginning. Take out your pins, clip your thread. You're not allowed to look until you do that. It's my rule. That looks pretty good. So here's the inside. I almost caught it everywhere. I mean, you guys would be okay with this, right? Where did I fall off? I fell off right there. But on the outside, see? So, and it's easy. <laughs> it really is, I promise. As long as you're not battling torquing, um, I think that this is a pretty straightforward way to go about sewing anything like cuffs or collars. When I was learning to sew, this is true. When I was learning to sew, the way you used to sew yokes in, like on the back of a shirt, was like this. You, you um, sewed one seam. And you could pick your poison. You could sew those two yokes to the bottom or the top of the shirt, so the bottom yoke seam. Or you could sew the shoulders. And then the other one, whatever was left, the one to the, the shirt or the one to the shoulders, the ones to the shoulders, you had to do this, fold under. That's the way they told you to do it. Fold it under and then um, top stitch it down. And I was really in the mode of making a lot of button down shirts at the time. And I was like, I hate this, you know? Yeah, that's a great idea, Elizabeth. And um, that's when I was like, uh-uh, I don't wanna do this anymore. And that's how I figured out how to sew yokes. I don't do the burrito method. I don't really know what I call my method, but, um, um, and when I heard about the burrito method a couple years ago, I was like, Oh, maybe this is what I do, you know? So it's not, but it, it's the same idea, I think. I actually never, I've never done the burrito method. Yeah, I think that's great, Elizabeth. If you don't catch it. But if it's a lot, you may worry then, you know? There you go. And those are done. See, look how fast that was. Like, maybe it seemed like it wasn't going to be fast, but that it's pretty good here's the inside of this one. Ooh, I did pretty good again I fell off right there at that thickness at the seam juncture get rid of this back stitch there we go all right neckband time oh that's a good idea Allison Ooh, Sydney nice okay Let's do it. All right, so for this one, uh, we're gonna do the exposed seam method. And so this is what I'm talking about. Like that means that our seam, I don't have a zigzag. I could serge it if you guys want. Although I don't have the serger set up with this color thread. And we know what that could be like. Where's our neck band? All right, so first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna do that. All 
right, so let's, um, let's, uh, we're on blue thread, great. Let me, we're gonna put the hanging loop on. We almost bought, forgot. Wait, what did you say, Patty? How come I don't see your chat if you said something you're thanking Lisa for? Okay, I just probably can't see it. All right, so uh, don't forget your uh, loop. That was in the instructions a while ago and I missed it. Oops. And same with um, attaching the tie. I'm trying, I'm trying to stay up to date. All right, so here's this loop. I'm gonna put my tag in there. Hopefully they don't mind. It doesn't say my name, so. It's just this weird girl with a red nose. <laughs> okay, this loop is a, a little smaller. So let's put it down like this. I like to put the loop on top of my tag just so it doesn't hurt someone's neck. So uh, I do this a few different ways sometimes. This isn't very long, so I'm just gonna put it like this, the same side against the, sh the neckline. But on my one over there, I did this. I actually folded it and then folded it like this. Now, I know that um, I have one folded one way and one folded the other way, but for some weird reason, I could not get that dumb little, this little thing to lay the same on both sides. Like I, I was doing it. Okay, so here's one and then here's one, right? This is what I wanted so that I had this nice little crisp thing. My seam ended up on the long edge a lot nicer on that. And it's probably because I used bias and linen so it was a little crisper and it behaved a little better. So I didn't pick out these fabrics. <laughs> Thanks for thinking I did. <laughs> um, so that actually works. We can leave this like this. Oh, actually, I, I actually got it in there. But have you ever seen like the loop they do that? I think it's pretty cool. You know, like that, and then press it. You can see my seam there, but I don't think that's a big deal. Maybe my white label can. If we iron it, it'll be nice and flat, just like that. It looks so professional, right? But on mine, I I couldn't get it to do that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I tried and tried. Yeah, look, <laughs> mine's twisted. I just couldn't get it to do it. It did this weird bump thing, and I hated it. You win some, you lose some. All right, so we're gonna put our interfacing on to this corner. So you can get your little interfacing. Usually I do, if I'm doing fusible, I usually do it before the stream, but I just wanted to do this on camera so I remind you to do it. I think on a fabric like this, it's gonna be pretty important that you reinforce this corner. Put that all to relax there. We'll get this away so we don't press any big creases in there. We're just gonna lay that on there. I don't think I have any water. Oh, I didn't put the iron. Oh, I did put the iron in the camera. No, I don't have any more water in my little pitcher. Oh, my shirt matches the project. <laughs> that was probably subliminal, right? <laughs> I actually changed a couple times because, what was it? Oh, I wanted to wear this tank top under this. And there was something about it that was, it was laying funny. Um, it prompted this whole like craft project in my bathroom. Where I was like, you know what, what if I did this to it? And then I was like cutting it with my scissors and I was like, oh yeah, I guess we're not wearing this today. So, um, yeah. And then I realized it was just a little too much to wear under this shirt. This shirt's a little bit loose. It's kind of too bulky. All right. 
go. I just want to start ironing this because, you know, it's like satisfaction. That pattern piece in the bin. <laughs> okay, now um, we are going to sew our neckband short ends to each other. So center back neck, right? So we're gonna sew this right sides together. Half inch seam. I should have done this before I did that because now I'm gonna go back to the iron. <laughs> now we're going to open up the seam here. going to fold it wrong sides together. Line this all up. We're going to treat this as one. Try and keep your seam lined up. If there's notches, keep those lined up. No torquing. We just say no to torquing. It's really kind of like, I feel like it's the bane of most sewists, you know? It's so annoying when we get that kind of torquing happening. I know you guys are going like, she sounds like she's saying torquing, but I'm not. <laughs> This is when you can really see some of your cutting discrepancies. You can see like this. All right, so this is laying nice and flat without being coerced, right? We're good. Okay. Oh yeah, I usually go for more subtle contrast. I think this looks really good though. The blue matches really nice. This, this, to be fair, looks much better in person. It looks a little like, I don't know if it's greenish on the screen and maybe it's my screen. Uh, it looks better in person. I think it looks better in the face cam. Wait, there we go. It's more mustard. All right. So now one of my ideas just don't know if it'll work to clean finish this not clean finish it clean finish it but to um, sew this exposed seam method but then have our seams be finished is to I think I'm honestly gonna have to break out the serger is um, to then tuck this edge under and stitch it I'm kind of tempted to try that all right, so let's see. Make sure I'm not missing anything. Stitch half inch to corner and clip. So um, I can't remember how the instructions are. I imagine they're like this, but I'm gonna start from the center back neck and I'm gonna go down to the center front neck and then I'm gonna reverse it and go the same on the other side. I think coming toward that neck front area is a lot easier to do um, if you're not starting there, you know what I mean? All right. So I'm going to put this right sides together. Now, if you need to stitch this long edge to make sure that it stays lined up, go for it. I'm kind of tempted. I have to be, I have to admit, make sure you have your stay stitch in your neckline, especially at that corner. She even had to put an extra one in right now. All right, so we're gonna sew this half inch seam allowance. That little notch matches up to your shoulder seam. So try and make it do that. You know, my rayon's a little like, nah, I'm gonna relax and stretch out now. <laughs> it's like, no, you're going to line up to the seam. There's no like hot tub 
happening here. I can feel the thicknesses of my uh, label and the loop back there. I love that I still don't know what I'm going to do with these raw edges. <laughs> Mystery. <laughs> okay, here we are. We're coming down the front here. So we stitched that stay stitch at 3 eighths of an inch, mainly so that we don't have to worry about it showing right now. All right, so let's make sure my, my rayon isn't relaxing right now either. You need this raw edge right here to extend a half inch past this pivot point right here, right? Because it needs to, we're going to pivot right here and then these edges are gonna line up to there. We're going to clip that corner. I know. Don't worry if you're reading ahead. I'm going to clip it right when I get there. All right, so here we are. We're getting there. Now there's my stay stitch. How's that better? It's a little dark. Do you want me to brighten it up? How's that for you guys? Let's maybe get rid of that. So there we are. So this right here, this whole thing is going to be an inch past this raw edge and your edges right here should be, you know, half inch past the seam, right? So it should be an inch past it. So that pivot point is like right here, right? It's a half inch away from this edge. So there's my stay stitch. It's a little smaller than that. So I'm going to pivot right here. Now the reason I didn't clip yet is because I feel like um, just in case everything looked like it was on track when you got you know, when you were like prepping it and doing your stay stitching, doing whatever, when you're actually here in the moment, you might be like, oh, you know, I was a little soft right there and I was a little wider there, you know, and then this gives you the opportunity to kind of get it all back on track and then clip to where you're sewing. So the other thing you can do is, do I have a, I don't have a single marker or chalk here. Wow. Oh yeah, here's some, I don't know how sharp this chalk, it's not even chalk, but let's mark it. This is another thing I think, um, you know, I'm going to get something pointier. This is really helpful if, if you're a little nervous about this part. Let me get a marker. Where are they? Oh, they're behind me. I've been trying to record a, uh, a tools video. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> I don't know. A lot of people already made it. They gave us the project. All right. So uh, we started using the Crayola Ultra Markers because Nancy's so smart. All right. So we'll just mark it on here. Half inch and a half inch, right? I'm having trouble doing it at this angle here here this is that's your pivot point right there mark it on there if you want all right so we're gonna go along and we're gonna pivot there but I'm gonna clip into that needle not in the needle but you know what I mean like right up to it oh, I have to use these because those are sharp but they're you can't really force them all right and now we're gonna pull this all the way around and line it up with this raw edge. Pull it all the way down there. I know you're like, that's it, really? It is. Make sure everything's nice and taut because this is when you, you get a tuck if you don't. Now, the other thing you could do right now is fold this around. I don't know why mine's so wide there. And stitch straight across. Yeah, look at, it's a little funky there. Let's see how I did. I nailed it. Okay. <laughs> so that's why I say clip when you get there. That's what it looks like on this side. We can just, um, oof. I really want to cut that off, but I, my idea for finishing, remember I had that idea. All right, so there you go. That's the front of your Suki. 
I'm actually quite pleased with that. It looks really nice. And this is what it looks like on this side. Oh no, Melinda. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I'm hardly a sewing influencer. So, um, yeah, I mean, I've actually thought about like affiliate links, but um, I have a problem with that. All right, so now we're gonna do it from the top down from the robe side. I kind of like doing it from the neckband side more. There's advantages to both. All right, so here we go again. All right, Robe, get over there. Where's my notch? It's here somewhere, right? Maybe not. Okay, fine. We knew my uh, rayon wanted to get a little stretched out, so we'll try and not let it do that. Well, I think I just sewed to the right of my stay stitch. I'm gonna have to go back and look at that. All right, so now when I'm getting closer down here, we're gonna get, we're gonna see how it's lining up. Looks a little like the stay stitch right here got a little tight. All right, so here we are. We're getting down here at the end. And remember, we wanted this to go an inch past this raw edge. And, and I say an inch because that is um, the half inch seam allowance twice. Hey, Nancy, you're just talking about how awesome you are. It's, it's been kind of long. <laughs> Dinner and a glass of wine sounds great. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna line this up, right? I'm gonna try and get this on camera so you can see because we're doing it from the robe side now. So you want this to be about an inch past right here. And look, I'm getting a little shallow. So what would you do if it was a little shallow? Well, you can change your seam allowance because seam allowance is allowance, right? It kind of gives you the flexibility to change, change what things are, you know, where they're sewn at. The problem with that is sometimes things won't line up um, further down the road, but in this case, I think it'd be okay. No one's really gonna hold both your center front neck bands together and go, yeah, that's a quarter inch different. And if they are, just stop talking to them. They're not your friend, <laughs> right? So you really just need to think about like, okay, I only have three quarters of an inch hanging down. All right, we'll decrease your seam allowance on this edge three to three eighths because you just lost an eighth and an eighth for each seam edge, right? All right, so let's see if I can get that inch. You know, what is an inch? Remind yourself, I often forget, right? So that's really an inch, right? That's what I want. We'll pin it, let's pin it. Let's be smart. That's non-negotiable. Can we do it? Oh, that looks fine now. I thought I was pulling there and it might be a little bit, but it's actually helping me. That's stay stitch for the win, right? All right, so we can't really see where we are, but we know we're trusting. So we're just gonna go, remember we're going a half inch past, I guess both sides of this ruler. I'm not a big fan of this ruler. I'm just looking for that pivot point, right? Half inch, half inch, and that pivot point is a half inch from this edge and a half inch down from this edge because you're just you're just paying attention to the raw edge so I don't feel like we're an inch past but I'm gonna trust I'm gonna go a little shy I think we're okay though okay get rid of your pin clip to your needle And we're going to talk backup plans too. Like if you're just like, mm, I'm really nervous to do this step. I just want you to think about the um, neck band staying against this raw edge here. That's your seam allowance. Cause look, now this is a straight line. See? So 
when you clip that, you have one long straight line. So you, if you would make you feel better, you can clip it first. I just feel like the clipping later kind of gives you more flexibility. All right, and so now we're gonna pull this all the way over and you need to be firm. But at least this time, you can actually see if you're getting any tucks. But because we clipped right up to the needle, we're not gonna get any tucks. All right, so let's sew a little bit and now we're going to, I'm gonna fold this and fold it back like that. I'm just trying to get that fold right on the edge of the neckband. That's supposed to be a half inch seam allowance. I'm not sure why mine's an inch. All right, there we go. Let's see how I did. Oh, perfect. Those are just wrinkles from the process. That's sticking out a little bit right there, but honestly, um, that kind of thing, this for me, if I were to sit there and try and fix this sticking out there, that's where everything would go wrong. I know, I know where it goes wrong for me and that's it. I'll be like, oh, I want that perfect, you know? All right, so now let's talk about finishing this edge. So you could overlock this. That would probably be the easiest. Just be really careful, but look at this. You have a straight edge here, zip, and now you have a straight edge here. You're not sewing in a curve or cur turning a corner. This is actually two straight edges now. So serging it would be really easy. You can zigzag it, uh, you could bind it. <laughs> um, but I, I'm kind of trying to still stay true to only having a straight stitch. It's my challenges I like doing, right? Or if you don't have a serger. So your next step would be to, um, that's what they have. You have you, they have you keep hemming that edge and see me, I just folded it over onto itself. So it lines up. This is my idea. I'm thinking I have enough seam allowance here to hem this over like this and clean finish it. My only worry about this, I'm not entering in the fair, but I am sending it back to a sponsor. <laughs> And they, just because they said I could sew it mostly how I like, I don't know what they really knew they were bargaining for, right? So let's trim this up right here, just so it's even and even. So this is what I'm thinking is, um, what if I hem this like that? and edge stitch it. As long as I get it nice and even around the neck, I think it'll look okay. You know? Minute rice <laughs> pieces of cheese. <laughs> no snow. <laughs> okay. So what do you guys think? I, this is my other thing I was worried about is I really can't do that right here, but I can take these out and hang them underneath again, or I surge it. Those are my options in my opinion. What do you guys think? We could surge it and then top stitch it. I feel like that's a little truer to how it's in the directions. But I know not everybody has a serger, but you could zigzag it or use pinking shears. And maybe I should do that. I just don't have blue thread on, but you guys would wait for me to put blue thread on, right? I have gray. Let's see. Because top stitching, it's going to be, oh, look at how nice that is. Looks really nice. It was really pretty easy, right? And we just have our hems and to attach our ties and that's it. So uh, actually what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna attach the belt because it's the same color thread. I also haven't put on any of my ties yet. I think I was supposed to do that already. <laughs> I think one goes on the, oh yeah, 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 yeah. But I wanna do that in mustard thread. All right, yeah, okay. So let's put on our ties. Less full if I surge, yeah. I think, okay, thank you. That's great, you guys. That's good feedback. Bind with main fabric. I don't wanna bind with, why are you, do you not like me? I don't wanna bind with rayon crepe. Oh, 
Oh, I don't know. All right, we'll, we'll do the serger. I think it's a good uh, illustration of serging that seam, you know? Okay, where's all those pins that I heard flying out all this time? Are any of them still there? Wow, I lost all of them, but I can see where they were. <laughs> There they are, okay. I can see where they were. I'm holding it up to the light. Here. <laughs> the binding would look really nice. I think um, the reason I, I don't wanna do that mainly is because she personally requested that we do the exposed seam method, and that is geared towards um, more of an advanced beginner. Binding would be a, would be a little bit more advanced, you know. Plus, it's just nice to have this kind of finish sometimes, you know. All right, there's our belt. All right, so I'm going to sew it like this, or like this, and then I'm going to fold it back on itself. I'm going to get rid of all these threads. You can see where those, those pinholes were. Thankfully. <laughs> Just bind it. <laughs> Now, if Derek were here, you guys could do, you know, the chorus, the chor choral rendition of it, right? So I just enclosed my seam allowances there since they are raw, right? This is, uh, was sponsored by Helen's Closet and we send it back. That's how the sponsorships work. She sent us the whole project. All right. Um, I was put my um, seam down. The seam, the seam right here. I'm looking for those pinholes. I hope I got that straight. I am a little nervous about that. I'm getting to that punchy part though, of the stream. You know where I haven't eaten. Sometimes uh, when we do uh, streams for hearts, I'll go back and like touch something up on the garment. No, I just did that wrong. <laughs> oh, shoot. I don't know why I'm so fixated on putting it going that way. Oh, to the center back. You want that raw edge poking the direction that the tie is going to kind of shoot off from. Oh, who likes taking out seams and rayon? Not me. Nobody does. There we go. This was always the, the service I provided when I mentored high school students for their, for this big program. I provided free seam ripping. Derek, Walter's singing. <laughs> nice. He he wants to do a, a so long. God, I can't even see where I just sewed that. Oh, there, now I can, okay. So this is one of those things I would probably make sure I got on straight later on. You know? All right. Trim that a little straighter. Pull it over. I'm gonna close it.
It just looked hecka crooked for a second there. All right. Okay, so what's left? We need to put on our ties. Look at, there's our belt. Loop. Did I really, did I do this right? I swear I looked at the directions for that. Ooh. I hope I did that right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I hope I did that right. <laughs> of all the things I'm like worried about the belt loops now. Okay, I actually like the contrast belt loop after all that agonizing. I actually like the contrast on the belt. It looks really cute. Okay, we just need to put on our tie um, that goes to the inside and the um, center front. And hem and serge the neckline. We're actually really close and I'm gonna sew my other neckband. Can I do that? Oh my God, it's three o'clock. What a long stream. <laughs> oh, I don't know, Adina. Okay, um, we're gonna change thread. Yeah, we're gonna change thread. Oops, the little thingy stuck to my finger and then it flew off. And we're going to change the thread in the serger. I thought this would take me like three hours to sew. Isn't that funny? Mine only took a couple of hours. <laughs> That's the difference between streaming and sewing for yourself. <laughs> um, I didn't put the, change the bobbin yet. You want a long stream? I'm hungry. Okay, let me see here. Get rid of all those little thready threads. I always sew a little after I change my threads, just how my machine is. All right, so let's see. Um, this is the inside wrong side. So the one tie goes on this side. Pretty sure. Goes like right below where you put the um, belt loop. You can feel it in there. And this is kind of the same thing. You're gonna sew it with the raw edge toward the seam, right? And then we're going to um, bend it back on itself and sew it again. I, I actually might, I would suggest looking at the directions for this, but this is how I'm gonna do this. And I think there, there might be a slightly different way to do it in the directions. There we go. So now you have one tie in there. Because this, you have an extra tie on the inside to keep it shut just in case the belt comes undone. <laughs> All right, so we have that. And then we have the um, one that goes, I feel like it goes on the outside, but that doesn't make sense. Oh yeah, it does because the it would go right over left. So I might need to look up where that goes or place it, but it's gonna go on this um, left front as you're wearing it because you would be wearing, this would be the left front, right? And there's a tie on the inside. You would tie that and then put your right front over it and belt it. That's how it's gonna function. So we're gonna do that later. Uh, let me go get some serger thread and we're gonna try and serge. It won't take long to surge. What was that? Oh, it was my foot pedal. I forget, my foot pedal is really sharp. This is when I'm like a little bit of a circus act because I have to stand and so. Um, let me see if I have better thread color than that gray. Okay, I have some 
choices. I'm going to do it in the blue since the uh, neckband gets pressed towards the garment. Those are my options. None of them are that great. I think the gray out probably works the best. Oh, maybe this blue actually. Actually, I think this blue. Hmm. Yeah, let's do with this light blue. I have a navy blue too, but I think that's just too dark. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna do the light blue. Okay. All right, this doesn't take me long. It'll take me longer probably to thread the needle than to change <laughs> the others. Yeah, good point, Adina. Yeah, you could do it left over right or right over left. <laughs> You're the Jeopardy music. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, it would be nice if you could, if you knew someone joined the stream but didn't say anything and they were just kind of like, huh, nobody's here. What's going on? You could just, if you knew that they joined, you could be like, she'll be right back. <laughs> I watched one streamer and he streams for a while. You gotta be kidding me. That really did break, didn't it? Well, I totally jinxed myself saying that wouldn't take long. Ooh, my daughter would be really bummed she missed out all on this. She loves cleaning the inside of my serger. I have to use the air threader. It's not bad, it's just, I totally jinxed myself saying, oh, this won't take long. It's another step. Any of you have an air threader? It's pretty cool. Sometimes it can make the difference between using your serger and not using your serger. If it's easy to thread, it doesn't need air threading to be easy to thread though. But that does make it nice. All right, get my sample. Bye, Nicole. <laughs> Thanks for coming. All right. So we're gonna uh, overlock this neck band here. I am standing and surging. It's always fun. Actually, I can't move this back. I have to move it toward me because the uh, foot pedal doesn't reach. All right. One time I surged my dress live on camera. It was terrible. But you'd never know it. It was the Myosota dress if you want to watch all the drama <laughs> unfold. <laughs> Terry. <laughs> You've just never had to thread. That's pretty funny. The air threader, it's the, um, I don't know if you saw inside there, Melinda. Melinda is mostly quilting, so she doesn't have to probably worry about this. But right here, these little ports here, when I press this, you can, I don't know if you can hear that air. 
it threads all this crazy stuff in here. My first few sergers didn't have that. All right, so we're gonna serge right across this to make sure you don't have anything else in there. I think I'm actually gonna do it from the neckband side because that's the nicer side of the serging in my opinion. And that's what's gonna push against the robe. I'm gonna lift up my presser foot, push that back in there. Mine gets a little funny about thicknesses. All right, let's leave some tails. Let's do our other one, and then we'll do our neckline. If you didn't do this, that's fine. If you didn't hem it over it, that's totally fine. I'm just trimming a little bit off, not much. I leave the tail because I like options and I'm really awkward about serger tails for some reason. Oh, okay, Melinda. Sorry, I made assumptions. <laughs> I don't really, like you'll see mostly I don't use sergers because I, I don't think they're always necessary. But I do think that if you get into garment sewing very much, you're probably gonna find it to be a very useful and valuable tool. I'm trimming off a little more than I want to because I don't know if you can see that this is a little uneven right there and I left it that way so it wouldn't torque. It's probably just my cutting wasn't very great right there. So make sure none of this creeps under here. Gosh, you know what? Dang it, I, I kind of want these off. I kind of want those off. I'm gonna take these off, you guys. I'll just re-sew this seam after we serge. I always do this. I put my thing on and then I'm like, you know what, well it's not a good place when I pull that. We're gonna place this afterward, okay? It's gonna be okay. I, I mean, what do you wanna cut with it, Mrs. Necro? If you're doing like, um, I wouldn't go much smaller than the one I have right here, which is 18 by 12. That would cut binding and small things, you know? You couldn't cut a garment out on it. You could probably cut a bag, you know, or, or quilts. All right, we're just gonna, sometimes you just gotta do the right thing, you know? Now you know my line. It's things like that and it's because when I would have pushed this towards the garment, that would have been this big bump to have to deal with. So keep arranging your garment, especially around this neck curve, so it doesn't slip and go under your serger. Get all these little edge the threads toward the seam allowance. Um, Rayanne really found having a small um, cutting mat and cutter really handy to have at her sewing machine. So that might be something. All right, so now you're getting down here. Make sure you keep this, this uh, robe out of the way because it's very loose and flowy, right? We're at the end. So pull it all the way over and we're just gonna go straight down. We don't have to really worry about that when we started because we started at that end. All right, good advice, guys. That looks really nice. Look at that. Okay, back on track. Yeah, trimming things, I think that's great. I think you might get some use out of it if it's in your budget. Yeah, exactly, Sydney. I really love the rotary cutter. When that thing came out, I haven't looked back. It does not work for everybody, but it, I love it. 
All right, so uh, let's fix that neck band at the center back neck. We need to just sew that seam again because we took it out. Where was that? Um, right here? Oh yeah, this is a really small little area. So we got that repaired. Let's get rid of this little thread here. Oh shoot. <laughs> well, I'm actually thinking that I want to um, top stitch this in mustard, but I was gonna try and do a, a blue bobbin, you know? I know I'm taking forever, you guys, but these little finishing details, these are actually things I do like spending time on, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me uh, take this. I knew I was doing that in a different thread color, but at the same time, I was like, that's okay. This is going to fold back on itself. I forgot that my bob was going to show on the neck band. <laughs> yeah, that's a good list, Nancy. So when I couldn't afford, I should have said this earlier, I didn't even think of it, but when um, I couldn't afford to get um, so many cones of thread, I got, um, what I did get was white, and I think white's actually optional, cream, navy, black, and a couple of grays. Grays are like, a, like the chameleon of thread colors. If you don't have a thread color that matches, always look th at your grays. And, and if you ever like want to take advantage of like a thread sale and you don't really know what to buy, buy grays. There are so many different kinds. Are you taking off, Sydney? Nice. Have fun. I hope you win. All right. Okay, I just need to get this rid of this right here. We'll sew this with the uh, correct bobbin color. Okay, I've it's the thing is I've can't get it out now. I really locked it up. If I can just get a little bit on this side. I can probably cover it up with some blue. Need a piece of scrap fabric. All right, now let me do that again. All right, so now we're back on track. So I'm going to position these. Like this. Get rid of all this. And let's see, I think that the center right there, there's my center. Put that like that. Put our tie. We're gonna to top stitch the neckband hems and then we're done with this one. And I'm gonna show you that clean finished neckband on the other one that you're probably not so patiently waiting for, but you're not shouting at me and I really appreciate it. Cause I know I promised that to you. I'm, if I hadn't promised it to you, I would admit I'd probably do it as an upload. <laughs> okay, here we go. I twisted that. Ooh, I'm gonna let that go. It's gonna show my little seam on the other side because I just made it look nice from this side. There we go. That's my serger thread I just grabbed. I don't know why there's a there's a little serger thread right there. Okay. So now when I fold this down and top stitch it, that'll hang down from that neckband. 
and it's not folding against itself. Night, Walter. See ya. Stay warm. Um, and I think like this right here, hmm, I'm going to fold that tail under and just tack it. So that when I go to top stitch it, it stays there. Where's my other tail? Yeah, I'm kind of lame about serger tails. I don't like them and nothing I really do makes me happy with how I finish them. So I just sew them down now. That makes me the happiest. All right, let's top stitch this. So I'm gonna um, stitch this from the right side really would like to stitch this all in one go. The hems, the whole shebang, but I kind of can't because I can't stitch the hems from the top. I'm not that good. <laughs> Sometimes, Nancy, they might take it out and that's okay if they do. <laughs> they have a mission. <laughs> it's fine. Where's my, um, there we go. I, I didn't put my name on it because I think it's actually funnier because I imagine like I'll donate things and people are gonna be like, I sometimes see this um, little tag sometimes and I don't know where it's from, you know, but they're always really weird stuff. <laughs> yeah, you do that too with the tails, right Sherry? We've talked a lot about these serger tails in the stream. And everyone's had some really amazing suggestions. Now, if you needed to press this, press it. I, I uh, feel like I'm getting away of that I don't need to. So, so I'm actually gonna stop about where this hem is. Like that. So I can continue my hem down and it'll look continuous. Just kind of a nice little illusion. Can you image search? <laughs> um, I should have just started at the bottom here. I uh, have this thing, if you don't know me, is where I don't like my start and stops to be center front, right? Like front and center. Like you'll see the way I do neck, um, neck bands and collars is I start at the center back and go around. I just started that one like that, but I can't actually do that on this. And I, and I knew that, but I still did it that way for some reason. So. It's really nice. Um, hello, Stephanie, welcome. Um, it's really nice having all this seam allowance for this top stitching. This is far less fussier than what I was thinking of doing, you know, like the experiment with hemming it over it. Sometimes that's better, right? Let's just hope the uh, clean finished neckband goes as well. I have a little tuck there. We're not gonna talk about it, just look away. I'll fix it later. There we go. That looks nice. That looks really nice. Okay, I'm glad we did the surging. I kind of am poo-poo about surging sometimes. I know that, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so uh, now we're just gonna hem it. I'm just gonna go for it. That's, I, uh, don't normally do much else, but I actually want to start that. Oh, 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 my bobbin, my bobbin, my bobbin. Thanks for telling me. <laughs> Can I make it? I have a half a bobbin. I would think so, but you know, with a French seam, sometimes you really use the thread, you know? She sent me two spools, which is really nice. Okay, let's do it now. Let's put that thread tail in there all the way of the serger. I'm gonna start right where I left off with the center front. Mm 
You know what was really funny is, remember when we did the Madison cardigan by uh, Style So Me Patterns? Um, I had a more than like at least three people say, I just want to see you do that hem. And it made me, and I was already done by the time I saw those comments. And I remember thinking, did I do, I wonder why? Like, it made me worry that I didn't do it good enough because I think they were going to be disappointed. It was a really easy hem. I think it that that garment in particular gives the illusion. It's so stunning, right? Like it's it's just like it's a pretty spectacular pattern and it definitely has that like wow factor when you're wearing it. I mean, definitely like I was kind of surprised by the engagement that that pattern generated. And I think the hems look like they're probably a curvy nightmare. But they weren't. They were really easy. Plus that cur when it's a curve sometimes, it makes it a lot easier because it's you got that bias kind of helping you, you know? It's not like shirt hems where you just want to pull your hair out on the sides, you know? <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, you can iron and pin it. There's nothing wrong with that. I was just uh, having this uh, idea that I, maybe I should have mitered this right now, but I think now's not the time to like go into experimental stuff. <laughs> so let's see. This probably has a, I'm not sure what the hem allowance is on this. I'm gonna keep it the same as my center front. I'm just gonna try and do something a little nice. It's very long, so I'm not worried about, you know, doing too much. Okay, I did like an inch on the front. I do this and this and that. No. What do I want? What do I want? I want that. That's what I want. I knew I'd get there in the end. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny mrs necro because i i exactly barbara um ensure success right i that would those were not my strongest projects <laughs> i maybe that's why we got so much from it because we were like oh okay wait i kind of lost my thing here this is where I want to fold it. I'm trying to make this easy. You know what would make it easy? A nice, big, fat, juicy pin. There we go. I want that fake miter look. I like the hem to be filled with all fabric. I... I a lot of times, most hems, you only folding down like, say, a quarter of an inch of the one and a half inch hem allowance. And I don't like that because um, I, I don't know. I just like the way the hem feels when it's filled with fabric, you know? So, like, I'm trying to fold and fold the same amount, you know? I don't want to get a weird point at my center front. I think I might be heading there. Try not to pull so it relaxes a little bit. <laughs> I just need to do the neck band. Don't worry about me, you guys. I could do it as a separate upload. <laughs> yeah, with FOE, yeah. <laughs> you know what I learned the other day, uh, Mrs. Necro, is... Um, what TNT means. <laughs> I, I was like, what does that mean, you guys? Tried and true. I like that. It is true. I like that the patterns I sew are considered tried and true. We're just going along. I didn't do my other center front, did I? I should have. 
I've learned not to just pull on that stuff because uh, you kind of get in trouble sometimes. That's when you pull, you know, like your uh, line in your design of your fabric. One of the reasons I think that works good when I when I hem without pins or anything is I always make sure I'm folding perpendicular to the fabric like this. And I think like, and see how when I did that just now, it almost looked like it was going to torque. That means I need to relax a little bit while I stitch it down. So it's not in that, that torquing phase. Try and get it so where it's relaxed and it's not going to do that. The thing is, like, this is one thing I'll say. I know I do make hemming look a little easy, but I have handled a lot of fabric and that helps a lot. So the more you handle fabric, you'll get there. You know? <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> yeah, see now I'm getting a little bit here. It's because there's a slight curve right here. So we're just going to relax it. Kind of ease it in there. And sometimes you do need to kind of ease it in there. And then I'll do things like this. Like I'll push a little bit with my awl. And hopefully I've successfully averted the torquing. And if it's really bad, I can just take out that little section and then kind of finesse it into place, you know? The rayon crepe is kind of uh, good and bad for stuff like this. It's kind of wishy-washy, but it's kind of wishy-washy, you know? Plus when I iron it, it'll, it'll calm down too. Okay, I'm stretch. I'm trying to get these little pieces in there. I think I went a little off the uh, rails for the directions as far as hem allowances go. All right, so th this I, this kind of makes me mad that I didn't do that first one because now I'm going to be doing my miter the opposite. <laughs> so I had one project kind of go badly with my hem, but the the stream it went fine. It looked fine. It sewed together fine. It did not hang fine, and that was my lined howry. So um, use your words. <laughs> um. Oh, free gift patterns next week. Yeah. So what ended up happening was it was one of those things that reminded me of that movie Contact. <laughs> I know it's such a weird reference, but do you remember that movie Contact with Jodie Foster? Is this the whole front? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And remember the moment where she goes into space and she's in that little seat and she's rattling around and um, that wasn't part of the plans from the extraterrestrials. And so she is just being rattled to death, you know, and she's just like, screw this. And she gets out of the chair and then it's all calm. And then she can enjoy the ride. She's walking around, it's totally fine. Do you guys remember that? That's exactly the hem of my um, line towery. I sewed it way too much. Like I just was like, this is what I want. And then when I used it and wore it, the two fabrics, they acted a little differently from one another. And the outer fabric just relaxed. It was that linen, um, viscous linen noil. It probably just relaxed and got a little stretched. Um, not stretched, just relaxed. So it kind of gets bigger. And the lining was a, a smooth rayon. And so what happened was it billowed and it didn't hang correctly so I had to take out the hem and once I just took out the top stitching the whole thing was fine so that's what I remember it reminded me of that movie contact did you guys see that um that the uh 
observatory in Puerto Rico just collapsed. That's where contact was filmed. I didn't even know about that observatory there. And it, it was this kind of this incredible structure that was suspended over like a, like a canyon type of thing, like a lush canyon. It's worth Googling. So they were a little worried about it and they were like, yeah, no, we gotta stop using this thing. All right, now I'm getting some funkiness here. Um, and, uh, and it, and it, and it was, um, t like cabled, cabled and tethered in this clear structure suspended. And, um, it fell this week. It like cables blue and they have all this footage of it because they have cameras on it. It's crazy. I'm just going to look at this whole length here. I'm trying to get rid of this torquing that's trying to start and I'm like no I don't have the patience for torquing right now so you can just take a flying leap let's try and get it back on track but yeah there's I saw a video on it it's totally worth seeing it's crazy yeah the fact that people could have been in that like astronomers astronomers right yeah I'm always worried I'm gonna call an astronomer an astrologist <laughs> a little twerking here so I can tell I know I know I'm trying I go up to the top here and I check it that's my non-negotiable right yeah exactly it's been in a lot of movies apparently I had no idea. I think I heard about it on Sci Science Friday. I like that show when I catch it. With Ira Flato. I watch I listen to a lot of radio. <laughs> Alright. Here we are. I made it. I wanna sing the Dora theme song right now. Okay. Ooh, look at that. I nailed that right there. I don't think I nailed it on the other side. Let's do Get rid of this pin. Get rid of my start stop thread. Let's see. I know I probably have a start stop thread over here. Yep, there it is. I know exactly where my machine leaves them. Let's see how this one looks on this side. Oh, yeah. I'm only like a stitch under it. That's okay though. All right. Whew. All right. I'm just going to put it on my dress room really quick and then I'm going to get to the other one. I promise. <laughs> so we can see. It's really nice. Let's see if I sewed that back on straight because I, I doubt it. I love the way this hangs. It really fits the front of my form really nicely. size uh, 22 I'm gonna say oh. but I, I think it, it fits just fine pockets I just left one and the openings a little small I'll have to fix that but that looks really nice All we need to do is add that other tie, right? I just need to add this tie here. Oh, right here. Okay. So now I know where it's at. I can just add it right there. Um, so you're going to sew your other tie on right there so that you have it to tie on the inside there. Okay. Don't forget to do that, especially if you're doing gifts. Nice. 
Yeah, I love it too. It's so pretty. The score. Oh, I haven't heard of that. Oh, wow. 60 miles. Yeah, mine's 22 minutes. It's kind of the perfect amount. I haven't had a, a commute in like decades. <laughs> and I'm kind of liking it just because I, li I like to listen to a lot of audio books, you know? Yeah, I think so too. It's a very deep armhole. My, I could have, I should have pressed these pockets and process so that they laid a little nicer right now. No, you probably can't even see that. Never mind. I turned it on. I turned the camera the other way. All right. So let's get to this um, clean finished one. So I have a little bit of a conundrum right here at the center front. But if that one had a one inch hem, maybe I don't have the conundrum. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to check right now what this is right here so if this goes an inch past there oh i think i could get away with that all right so i'm gonna hem my center fronts this time first i need this so this is a clean finished neck band do i need to take my label off do I? I think I, I got it. I fixed it. No, they get my label. They can take it off if they want. <laughs> no, it's not too hard to work with at all, Terry. It's probably easier than the round. Yeah, the fabric is, it's, I'll put it right here so you can see it. There, look at that. So pretty. Yeah, just walking around the house in that thing it's gorgeous all right uh what was i doing oh yeah i'm changing my thread on this one oh this one's clean finished so i don't have to worry about it because the seam allowance goes into the neck band thank you beverly we haven't seen megan in a while huh she was always our label reminder Hopefully she's doing good. This is, I, I'm really surprised we're still streaming. Okay. So I am going to use this poplin as an interfacing and just treat it as one. And that mainly that's because this is pretty lightweight compared to this edge right here it's not going to be the easiest thing to do because um I'm, you know honestly speaking because i didn't pick fusible fusible is really nice i'm just not like i don't know i don't really care about fusible too much well that's the perfect time to make it adina because then you'll have it for next summer <laughs> Nancy. soothe the snow nerves <laughs> Um, you know, I really wanted to make my, uh, capsule wardrobe go bag. And then I was like, well, I don't really need it now. Like fire season's kind of over, even though Southern California is burning right now. And, um, then I was like, oh, I'll get it ready for next year. That's what I'll do at the beginning of summer. So I think that's a good time to knit too in summer so you can wear your things in the winter, but no one wants to knit in the winter either. All right, so let's just line up. So I'm just gonna treat this as one. And um, I'm going to, I actually had to think about this a little bit because I didn't know what the center front did and I was a little concerned. I was like, I, I kind of think I know what I'm doing there. That's right, Beverly. All right, so I think I can make that work. Making that hem allowance. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna um, hem this. So it's kind of the reverse. What I'm gonna do? I'm gonna hem this. Oh, 
okay, okay, okay. Just because it's yours, Jeremy, doesn't mean it has to look bad. <laughs> okay. I got something out of this this time. See? Oh, Adina nice. <laughs> oh, I am so sorry about the jelly roll thing. <laughs> I think we all learned a lot from that. And that is never trust jelly roll to pick your fabrics. <laughs> I really love how mine uh, came out, um, but I just feel like there's something about the way that the fabrics fall in that, that you may not end up with something you're really that into, you know? And so, there you go, Mrs. Negro. Yeah, I think I'd like to make my sister a quilt. But I think I'm going to do the cl Clava by Miss Make. It looks like, um, uh, like, uh, my brain's kind of addled right now. Um, like, like solar, lunar, you know, different ph phases of the moon. <laughs> I could not think of what that was called. And she kind of likes things that are celestial. And that would be kind of like a subtle nod to that. I bought a lot of her, I have like three of her patterns. I really like them. They're kind of modern. All right, I have this little thread. I'm doing a really bad job of this right now because I'm trying to hurry. Don't be like me. There we go. Put this in. Look at all these threads here. Let's just get rid of it. They're just like kind of giving me a headache. There we go. All right. All right, just, just, just finish it. Don't look at it. <laughs> okay. So, what I'm thinking is, um, I read the directions for this and I wasn't quite sure that's how I would do it. So, like I, like I always do, I always do from the inside to the outside. Turning this corner definitely presents a completely different like layer to doing this. But it's the same idea. We're going to go across, we're going to go around, go inch past. So, and then we're going to turn it to the right side and finish it. Clava. C L A V A. I'm pretty sure it's Miss Make. Miss Make on Instagram. Um, I don't remember her name. What the heck is her name? C-L-A-V-A. -A. Yeah, let me drink some water. Melinda, I'll bet you've seen it. You know, it's one of those, I'll, I'll bet when you see it, you're gonna be like, oh yeah, I've seen that, you know? I like her quilts, they're simple. The other one she has, oh, I can't think right now. Okay, I'm just gonna sew. All right, I'm gonna start from the inside and I am kind of winging this, but we're gonna go for it. So um, I uh, like to start from the inside. Now there's a few different ways you could do this. You absolutely could do this a lot of different ways. One of the ways is that you could, you know, pre iron this edge. And I think that's a good idea. I'm just kind of trying to um, get going here. Um, but I absolutely do think like, doing this from the inside to the outside, it just ensures success on a, a lot of different fronts. So we're just going to do kind of what I just did. Um, and I'm just going to sew this right side to the inside of this jacket. I'm going to trim this seam allowance down a little bit so that I'm a little closer to my stay stitching. I can't really see it. So I'm just trying to make sure you're still going to uh, match your notches and all that hoo-ha. Half inch seam. Come on down here. 
And it's kind of like the sleeve band, right? We're gonna start from the inside and then we're gonna arrange it on the outside and we're gonna top stitch it down. And then it's all, you know, gonna work because we, we top stitch it from the outside. Oh, I'm glad you guys like that one. Yeah, I like that one a lot. All right, so we're gonna go an inch past here. I'm pretty sure my idea here, I, I'm, the funny thing is I don't think I've ever done this where it's an inset. But I like a challenge. All right, and so now I'm gonna clip into that corner. Right here, clip in here, all the way to the needle. I need my heavier duty scissors because this is pretty heavy. Right? And now we're gonna pull this around, keeping all these layers nice and flat and taut. Pull it around, raw edges together. I gotta like really pull this around here because it's thick. Pull all the way around perpendicular. Oh, mine's like. A lot is a lot extra. Okay, so we're gonna go all the way around or all the way down here. Mine's hanging off a lot more. I'm not sure why that is. It could have gotten a little stretched out in the sewing of this one. So there we go. See that? See that? Got that corner. I have a lot extra there. Trim that off. Now we're gonna go the other side. Sewing the binding on. Oh yeah, at the end. I do think my label might be up too close. All right, so same thing. Where's my notch? Where's my notch? down here again Just make sure that you're not going to run out this has to be at least an inch past your raw edge there right that who knows why I had so much on the other side the um, fabric I'm using on the neckband is a very open weave and it grew a lot on my neck bands. I had to trim off a, a half inch on each side, so inch total. All right, so. Line it up. Get to your pivot point. Clip to it. Oh, don't, don't, please don't go anywhere. My jacket's really heavy. <laughs> there we go. All right, so there's that corner right there. Can you see that? You can't even see that. Aren't you guys complaining? See that corner there? I'm going to clip into it toward the needle. And now... Folding around the... Notching around the quarter. What do you mean? This? This is just how you sew it. I don't know. All right. So now I don't know if you saw that, but when I pull like this, it lifts up that edge. You don't want that. You want to make sure that this is taut and this is taut as well. That's how you avoid getting those little wrinkles at the corner. The, um, this one I sewed all by myself yesterday, Adina, just so I could do this tutorial on how to clean finish. sew the neck band. It's linen on the outside and boiled wool on the inside. That's good, Adina. I'm glad you feel that way. Okay, so now look at all the seam allowance is going to go in there. And we're just going to fold this and top stitch it down. Right? Right. So this time we actually can just kind of trim this up and make it look a little better. You don't, may not want to feel all this through your collar. And, you know, my stellar cutting skills on that uh, interfacing layer, you know. 
it was h- kind of hard to make that inner this like poplin work for this such an open weave fabric i ironed it several times and i was just like you know i think i just gotta kind of go with this i'm just gonna trim this down a little bit you'll notice that today i didn't ever clip into the neck band or the neckline right here around this curve I don't really feel like that that would have been necessary or helpful, mainly because um, the collar stands straight up and it didn't feel very stressed there. And this time you don't have to because it gets to lay flat inside the collar. So you don't really have to worry about like doing that thing where you clip into the neckline, okay? All right, so we can actually clip this this time off if we want. All right, now we're gonna go to the iron. I love how easily impressed you guys are. My friend, I have this young friend that I game with, and he really wants me to start um, a TikTok, <laughs> a sewing TikTok. I'm like, in my free time? But it would be really fun to ju ju just do, like, sewing eye candy type of stuff, you know, just for the thrill of it. Look at, this is what my linen does. It kind of does this thing where it's just like flaring and um, relaxing. Oh well. Okay. So now let's, um, let's just iron this long edge. Again, this is kind of nice that our neck band is uh, not in two pieces that we can fold it over, right? Because it kind of relieves us of the responsibility of nailing it, the distance between the seam and the neckline. Uh, the uh, This is from Stone Mountain and Daughter. I'm sure they're out now. You might be able to find information Maybe on their Instagram, I bought it like last summer. It was really expensive, I'm gonna be honest with you. It's why I had not enough for this jacket. I, I really like did the fabric chicken thing. But um, you might be able to find the information out of the fabric and then search for it and you might just find some somewhere else. Maybe a smaller fabric store that doesn't quite have the following of them. I kind of just got lucky I missed it the time the last time. So I'm just folding this edge under like this, kind of in line with the stitching here. See that? Yeah, Beverly, right? That's how I feel about um oh, what was it recently that I was like, oh yeah. Oh, my Morgan jeans. That was such a nice surprise. I think I made those like one of the last weeks I could wear pants here. It was just too hot. Again, this interfacing with this really open weave isn't the most ideal, but it's better than fusible would be. This is just so, you know, it's it's almost like a seersucker. It's really interesting. I bought it because it's, I love wovens with texture. Like, I really love them. That's my weak spot. Yarn dyed things, wovens, hubba hubba. All right. Let's see, look at all this going, it just goes toward the neck band. So just take your time, you know, like iron this, make this line nice and straight right here, right? Sorry, it's a little overexposed. I can tone it down for you guys if you need. You have time still to fiddle with this too. Like see this corner might not, not might not be perfect right now. Let's try and fold that a little more like this. That way when I fold it up, it sticks in a little better. See, it's got a little more. Um, you know what you can do, Mrs. Necro? I don't know if you've seen Save um, on a, an Instagram post. Save to a collection. And then you can create collections. So I have a lot of collections like I have quilts, I have a uh, fabric design, um, patterns, uh, clothes, um, all kinds of things like that. Stop, I have, have one for stop motion because I, I really like stop motion. <laughs> Tell me what 
TikTok. <laughs> I'm not interested. <laughs> what about a Facebook page? I do have one, Adina. We have a group on there. You're welcome to join. Anyone's welcome. Might take me a week to accept your request, <laughs> but you are welcome. Don't take it personally. I'm just lame. All right, so I'm going to start. I did my center back here, and now I'm going to do this part right here. I'm going to kind of push that this way. And, oh, look at that. I didn't make it. I need even more of a seam allowance. Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That doesn't make sense. I already used a bigger seam allowance than I should have. And the other one worked. Why isn't this one working? What the heck? Let's go like this. Sheesh. I'm barely going to have enough. I have to do a bigger hem there. Now I need to know why. Ugh. All right, well, let's pin the rest of it. I'll make that hem a little bigger. Snap. So if I did that like that, I would have to do another half inch. Why is that? I'm like surprised. I already did a bigger seam allowance there. I should probably look at the directions. Maybe I did something wrong. I hope not. The whole point of this was to help. Yeah, it's called, uh, yeah, is that what it's called? So, so live sewists? So, so sewists, I think. Or just look up so, so live and then look for the group. Or, yeah. God, sorry. I'm terrible at Facebook. It shows, probably. <laughs> you guys are the only reason I have Facebook. All right, so I'm just pinning all these other areas. I'm going to sort out whatever nonsense happened at the center front there. This is quite thick. Like, my um, jacket is quite thick. And that's why I use this with the interfacing. So let's see. Did it work on this side? Oh, hello. It did work on this side. Well, what the heck? Do you think I just used a bigger seam allowance there? Ooh, look how nice that looks. Wow. I really wish I would have had enough fabric to um, make this jacket completely in the poppies, you know. So this is it. I'm just going to pin this like this and then stitch it down like I did on the sleeve band. And because I'm doing it from the front, I can completely control where it lands. I'm going to put that fold just, oh, see, this is why I don't like those pins, just past that um, stitch line. So I've got my beginning and end, and now I kind of find the middle. Push it down so that I don't get any torquing. And then I work in between in these like smaller chunks. It's kind of how I manage it. Just like that, and it kind of wants to do it. Yeah, exactly. I think it just depends on what you like, Facebook or Instagram. I left Facebook a few years ago, but um, I still have my uh, sewing page on there. It's fine. I don't mind that. And you're welcome to post, you know, questions, um, and then maybe, you know, you'll get help if I don't see it or someone else may see it. Um, you can, you know, post achievements on there. It's private, so no one will see pictures of you except us. <laughs> what happened here? I'm puzzled. Why is this one so much bigger? It's not, though. 
This is the stuff you love. You love it when I get it. Look at that. It's a quarter inch bigger. All right, I'm just going to do that hem bigger. All right. <laughs> Nancy, right? I block those people too. You know what's really funny is um, I don't really look at my followers on uh, Instagram very much. When I had to start completely over for so so, I was just like, eh, whatever. Um, and, um, you know, I'm more concerned about YouTube because if I get to certain levels of subscribers, I unlock certain things that will help the stream. So that's what I, you know, like when I got to a certain point, I could do other things, right? But um, the other day, I noticed that I was like 25 people away from 5,000 followers on Instagram. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I'm slowly making my way back up there. And, um, and then I noticed, because I was looking to see what my link did when I pressed it. I was like, oh, look at that. I'm one away from 5,000 followers. And then the next day, I went to see and I was back down 35, 35 away. I was like, okay, what happened? So I think also Instagram goes through, finds bot accounts and deletes them occasionally. And I just happened to witness that. And I was like, oh, well. All right, let's fix this one spot over here. <laughs> what happened here? All right, so, so I'm going to do this. And take this out right here. Try not to go to the corner because I don't want to have to deal with that corner just in case maybe my fabric frays. I've already clipped into it. It'd be really nice not to have to touch it, right? Yeah, do you guys use Pinterest a lot? Because um, I was thinking about blogging and someone was saying how Pinterest is so helpful for that. <laughs> Yeah, that's so awesome. I can't believe there's still 42 of you guys here. You guys are champs. Yeah, a lot of people use Pinterest for that. I never got into Pinterest, um, and mainly because I found it really repetitive. Where's my scissors? Over there. Like, I found people reposting the same thing over and over. Like, other people's content. And I don't like that makes me a little like mm, side eye you know all right so I'm just gonna take this part way down I'm not gonna go all the way I'm just gonna fix it enough so I can get my neckband in so you guys can see because you guys have probably been like oh my god lady when are you getting there but I gotta take it down a little bit so that I can blend it in later I'm not sure why it did that though the only thing I can think of is that my neck band is a little narrower, but it's not because I just double checked it. Um, the only other thing then it is, is that um, I really didn't get the same amount of hem allowance and um, it got a little stretched, relaxed, you know? Okay, so I'm just gonna, what I see, it was like a quarter of an inch, right? I wanted to fold this over my boiled wool to so that it would be less bulky in the hem, you know? Oh, I think I just cut my oh no, I didn't. Okay. So if I do that and do that, does that make it? Let's see. This I could go like this. I just didn't want to make it too complicated. Yeah, I think I could do that. All right, cool. We'll just hem a little bit. I won't even hem it. I'll just pin it. There we go. That way I can hem it later. It's, yeah, it doesn't work and it's fake, exactly. That does get really annoying. I was really surprised when I asked you guys um, that poll about using uh, sites to catalog your sewing and that a lot of you were like, mm, 
you know? And I was really surprised by that because I was like, okay, there's three. Oh, I have something else I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, there's three, right? There's Pattern Review, Textilia, and um, Minerva, right? And Minerva just launched that kind of a uh, component. And I know a lot of people who use it, especially creators. Let's see, did I, did I do it? And I was thinking, all right, well, if I had one, I would probably take the time to load projects on there. Okay, I think I got it. Okay, I, make, I can make that work. Um, and um, I was always surprised a lot of you don't do that. So then I was like, well, who are all these other people using these sites? <laughs> it definitely, it was kind of nice that it was that cut and dried. I was like, all right, all right, cool. I don't have to do this right now. This is not a priority because I have to prioritize my time. And that it would be a lot of work. I was actually even thinking I would enlist some help from someone. And um, I'm glad I don't have to do that. This little corner is really fussy. I'm gonna try and get it under this like that. Yeah, see that? So like I said, you could do this. You could sew this like this. I'll, show, I'll do one side. I think that this is a nice clean way um, to do it. My only uh, thing that this doesn't work sometimes is that you might get a little fabric hanging off of your neckband. So make sure you pull it really taut when you're wrapping it around this corner. And you also need to make sure oops, that you enclose that seam allowance you've already sewed if you did. All right, so then that way, look at that edge is nice and tidy. Yeah, and see in the, in the knitting world, it's actually uh, much more useful, I think, or maybe not more useful, but knitters find it more useful and get a lot out of it. And there's only one website. Um, so that really helps. And, I, and it is really nice because when you're knitting something, you might spend 60 hours on it, you know? You really wanna see like, is that gonna work for my body? Is it in, um, um, like, has someone made it in the yarn I'm about to use? You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right, Nancy? I feel the same way. Look how nice that is. All right, so now we're just going to top stitch this down, and it's going to look really nice. Right? So this edge is already done, so I just sewed that into a seam. The all is going to be really handy here. You just want that edge, that uh, folded edge there, to go just past the seam, okay? <laughs> just got a text from my daughter. She's been um, out of town on like her first little like exploratory trip. She's on her way home. So this little edge right here, just make sure it's just past that seam. And remember, this is the right side of your garment. Unless you're really caring how it looks on the inside, all you need to really do is make sure it looks good on this side. <laughs> Dina! <laughs> Apparently we don't post enough for you to notice. <laughs> it's funny, I thought you were, but I was like, eh. Hey, Glenn. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, exactly, Glenn. I did too. Ravelry is amazing. I I've really gotten a lot of use. In fact, um, before I knew about Pattern Review, Minerva, Textilia, I started putting my sewing projects on there. So if you look at my Ravelry page, that you'll see some of my old sewing projects before I had the stream. And they were really for me. Like, I feel like that's a really good place to keep track of things so you remember what you did, what size you made, what changes you made, you know, what notes, you know, stuff like that. 
And it's really nice when people do link it to a pattern. You don't have to link it to the pattern, then it won't be available in search results. But um, if you link it to the pattern, then other people get to see what you made and they can go, oh, that'll work for me or it won't work for me. I, I really appreciate that, you know? Yeah. Self zone. Wait, you get a lot of posts from self zone. Oh, I don't know what that is. Yeah, Patty guys, exactly. Isn't bad, see? And let me tell you, I'm doing this with fabrics that are actually kind of hard to manage. Like this one right here, it really would like to creep. <laughs> And it's kind of thick. All of these layers. There's the boiled wool, the linen, and four layers of neckband. It's kind of thick. But it looks a little bald moss. Okay. So now I didn't pre-sew this one here. See, so it's loose. Right? So just make sure that when you get to this corner, take your time, use, you mean like an awl. You can try and use the tip of a seam rubber, but really careful that knife at the bottom might do you in. You know, tuck these little um, edges in there. Get rid of that little thread there. And then make sure, you know, if you can get this little corner to be a corner, that's nice. And turn. You just want to make sure you're sewing it down pretty close to the fold, um, but that your fold is just past that stitch line, and you're not going, you're not sewing too far past that stitch line if you really want it to show on the other side. I'm going to push my fabric there so it doesn't start hanging off the end. So there you go. So now you have a clean finished neck band. You're going to really see where I didn't get it because of my boiled wool is a different color. But, you know, this is my Mr. Rogers jacket. I don't care. No one's going to see it. I find that to be a much easier way to um, clean finish things like this. You know? All right. We did it. Is this, which, which side do I need to fix? This one? Oh, I can actually just blend that in right now. Yeah. All right. Kinda. Let's see. <laughs> All right. I hate starting stops on my centers. So my only thing I need to do on this jacket, which was like so much faster to sew, is a, a closure. And um, I'll, I'm going to try and decide. So I'm thinking like these buttons or that weird dealy bob that I've already lost. So maybe it'll be the buttons. That turned out pretty nice. So uh, I didn't, Adina. Want to see it on me? It actually fits me like perfect without a lot of overlap. So this was a size um, 14. My shirt's so like rumpled at the bottom right now. Look at us. So this is the size 14. Oh, there's all my ties. I have I made ties to put on it. So it just hangs, see? It's not like a really big rope up here, but um, you can see, see how it's flaring right here? If I had done the full length, it would definitely be fuller at the bottom. Shorter sleeves, about two inches. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too, Ray. It's here somewhere, I think it fell on the ground. This is the size of 2022. See, a lot more fabric. This is me. This, this Beatrice is me, so. 
Da -da -da. So that's why I'm thinking, I just want something just to hold it shut right here, you know? What do you guys think? You guys gonna make some sukis? <laughs> Are you like, I feel like I've already made sticks with you today. <laughs> That was awesome though. That was an epic stream. I can't believe you guys have been here almost as long as the Blanca flight suit. I probably should have done a part one and a part two, so I apologize for that. Um, if anyone wants to, I should have had one of you, some of you do like uh, timestamps for me as we went. Cause I could tell you the time, I'm pretty sure. Can I tell you the time? I could put a counter next time. Yeah, exactly. Magne you know what? You reminded me. I actually, that's what I was going to do. Oh, here they are. All right, so the secret's out. I do have a few magnets for pattern holders, but I'm not making any more, so don't ask. <laughs> I have these sew-in magnets that I got as an experiment. So they're sew-in because they have the little bit around them. So um, the thing about sewing with magnets is, for me, they stick to my machine, so they can be a little tricky. So, yeah. But I was thinking about that. Thanks for the reminder. You know? Wait, I don't know why I'm shoving that in there. I love this website, by the way. It's super fun. If you have a kid that's, or an adult, I liked it. It's K&J Magnetics. They sell neodymium ma magnetics, which are the super strong kind. If you have a pacemaker, not a good idea. So, oh, my scarf. Isn't this great? Yeah, this little shawl. Yeah, this is Brooks yarn. Naturally dyed. It's beautiful. Um, What's this pattern? This might have been, I don't know what this pattern is. It's in my Ravelry, <laughs> which is my first name. <laughs> That's awesome, Nancy. I did that with a book. Yay, and I got myself a little Suki as well. Two for the price of one, right? And then we have this magnificent one. Turned out really nice. I'm happy. I think the twill is a really great fabric for those trim. She's absolutely right. With no interfacing in it, it still has a ton of body and lays really nicely. I think you can make pants out of it. Too. Let's try sewing in with your other machine. Yeah, that's a good idea, actually. And I can put my zipper foot on. Oh, really? Don't they stick to your machine? Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I've had those for years. I've been meaning to try them for a while. We, we looked at them for a closure, and then we just realized it would be too expensive. That's why people don't put magnets in clothing. They're just way too expensive. These things right here, they took two per pattern holder. They were like 36 cents each. That doesn't sound like a lot. 70, 75 cents per pattern holder, wholesale cost. Then you need to mark it up for wholesale and then you need to mark it up for retail. It ends up being almost a $3 of your cost. So it's a lot of money. All right, thanks for coming, you guys. Thanks for being here. Thanks for sticking it out. It was a long stream. Um, thanks so much to Helen's Closet. And then look right here, right here. There is a code. She didn't give an expiration date, so I'm not sure when it expires. Um, but 30% off the Suki Road pattern, which is really awesome. So And the code's so, so Suki. So, yeah, exactly. A lot of twill is, but this is like a rayon twill, so it's got drape. <laughs> I know, right, Allison? Thank you for all the donations. That was awesome. I think Ray is really a good influence on you guys. Wow. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Um, I will see you next week. Gift sewing next week. Uh, we're doing the Gathered Apron by Sew Liberated. Um, the Slippers by Melly Sews. Blank Slate Patterns. Free pattern. And the Reusable Shopping Tote on the Moda Fabrics website that's free by Ruby Star Society. I know it's a lot of things. So it'll be really fun. I haven't even bought my fabrics for it yet because I, I wanna buy, I wanna make my niece and nephew the slippers. So, and I might 
experiment with that. And what, do you guys know, does um, cork work for the bottom of slippers? This is such a satisfying knit because you just have to do lace work for a tiny little bit. And then it has this nice little, um, this little bind off that takes forever, but worth it. And if this was freshly blocked, it would look like this. It'd be so pretty. And this is a really, this is a, I love this yarn, the way it dyes, like this um, color that she uses, the dyes. So, yay! Thanks, you guys. Thanks, Helen's Closet. Um, I uh, really hope you like me. If you're new here, please like, comment, subscribe. It really helps. Um, and let me know what you want to make. I have a Patreon. We have donations through Streamlabs. And I sell patterns on the website. So, thanks, you guys. Ooh la la. <laughs> All right. Have a great weekend, you guys. I'll see you on Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific.